bad time in GD's studio going on at the moment. I know. Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 28 of Climbing the Ladder. I'm your host, Sham Man V. Joining me, as always, is John Clark of CSN and Mark Faraz of Quantic. What's up, fellas? What's up, what's How up? Much? It's glad to, <laughs> glad to have you back, Mark. Uh, I know you were crazy, crazy sick last week. And I was so sick. Not yeah. even cool. It's like everyone in my family was sick except for me, so I don't know how I avoided it all. It's crazy. But uh, joining us today is going to be Mr. Richard Lewis, uh, editor-in-chief of Kadred.org. What's up, Richard? Uh, hi. Uh, not a lot. I'm in the same boat as John, I think. Not a lot going on, but uh, I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll get the ball rolling. Not uh, a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, well, you, you know, I mean, I'm an eSports writer. We don't lead very glamorous or exciting lives, so. Yeah, there, I thought November yeah, was about to be like the most, like the busiest month of the year coming up here. Uh, <laughs> told you God, it's dying. It's, real show dying. it's dying. Yeah, exactly. Tell 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 too good over there. He's 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 got he's playing second fiddle to us today. Yeah, big time. <laughs> oh, that will be the day. that will be the day, man. <laughs> no. Oh but, uh, boy. Yeah, so I kind of wanted to kick it off and uh, just get things started right away since we. Getting off to a little little late start here, but I wanted to jump into just one one bit of news and kind of get your opinions on it. And I wanted to talk about the whole uh, FXO absorbing Team Legion. And uh, you know, obviously a lot, a lot of us in North America know Team Legion, and you know they're a mid tier team, you know mid to low tier team, right? And they had already announced that they had disbanded, you know, a couple weeks ago, I think, maybe even three weeks ago. So the news that FXO is absorbing them, like for me, was a little little interesting given that um you know again that they already disbanded so i wasn't sure if you know what they were <laughs> absorbing exactly so i wanted to ask you first mark is is absorbing a team you know like with its staff and players you know as a, as an entity itself uh more cost efficient than actually waiting for just everything to disperse and then just just kind of cherry picking each part well i think i think it is to a large part i mean like you know i i don't know i i kind of have a, a i guess a somewhat biased view on this because um, because we had such a successful merger of Vial and Quantic. Um, now, I mean, I'd say that there wasn't a lot of staff that came over in that merger, but, um, I, you know, like, I've always said that Quantic was like a fractured team before Vial showed up, and Vial had all this soul, and we just kind of bolted on our, our, our fractures onto their, their hole, and then we went down the road. Um, but I don't know that it's always like that. I think that, you know, I mean, there's a, there's a certain degree of economics you know, that scales better if you already have something that's working in place, right? Yep. Um, the question is, how well is it working? I think that there's an argument to be made in esports that a lot of times you pick up something that's already functioning and it's arguably functioning not as well as what you have already. Um, so for that reason, I think there's a lot of times when it's the staff that gets left behind more than it is the players. Um, right, so, I mean, for me, it's like, why not just pick up the players individually instead of officially picking up Team Legion, you know what I mean? That, that's Well, I think there's a certain amount of community goodwill. I mean, you know, the people who were really close to the Vile merger, for example, they were like, well, the investor the investment partners were with Vile before, so the investment partners, like, really, it was more like Vile saving Quantic than it was Quantic saving Vile. Right. But the investment partners were never nearly as committed in Quantic as they were, in, as, I mean, in Vile as they, as they are in Quantic. Right. So, I mean, it's like, would they have come without the team or not? I don't know, probably, but I mean, who knows? That's not how it happened. I mean, and this is just going back on our experience, right? You know, I mean, I think that it's it's one of those things where it doesn't really matter, but if in the eyes of the community, it kind of does. And I think if you can be FXO and you can be seen as saving a team of players as a unit, mm -hmm. you know, that that bodes well for your community goodwill, more so than just being there as the vultures to pick up the scraps of what's left over. Whether or not that's actually true or not, I think that, you know, bringing the entire unit, like the team as a unit, is a really good thing to do, and I think it's seen as a good thing to do. Um, you know, and it also makes it very clean because everybody knows that those players are destined for that other brand. So it's not like you have to go and fight for each of those players. Does that make sense? You get the entire unit decides to come with you, one go. So, right. Well, I know John has a lot to say about, but let me let me get Richard's uh, let me get Richard's opinion on on the whole. <laughs> Uh, well, um, I, picking up on what Mark said, first of all, the last point you made, I'm not sure I entirely agree uh, in terms of community goodwill. It seems to be very much a 
kind of double-edged deal because whenever an organization that's perceived to be slightly bigger than the one that they're picking up or merging uh, with, uh, you know, it picks up someone like far, far smaller, then the kind of the feeling seems to be in the community, well, why are those guys getting a shot? You know, they're, you know, they're not up to it. They're not up to standard. It's not what we want to see. It seems a strange move. And kind of reading between the lines with the whole FXO thing specifically, it looks like the players were kind of the last thing that they wanted it was almost like an afterthought that they were taking them on it seems to be that what they're intimating is they're getting something behind the scenes that maybe we don't know about or, or rather we know about and no one's talking yeah, about yeah what what could it be but certainly like, the players are no it? great shakes i mean uh, they can they can totally do without them right i mean we're, we're all in agreement on that yes and i can tell you uh you're you're what you're saying is is partly right actually what um, I think it's all scoots, man. This is a dirty money machine, man. <laughs> How this came <laughs> apart was that Team Legion. Uh, they did disband, but it was the League of Legends team that was that was more the disbanding, which is actually uh, what gave Legion really their name. Uh, they had a very good, yeah. very solid League of Legends team. Mm -hmm. yep. um, their StarCraft two players are consistent. They're good. Uh, I mean, you know, they're they're good at what they do and. One of the main reasons that I think FXO uh, decided to go with this, and, and this was something that Legion approached them about, because they wanted to keep to get, they wanted to stay together. The team wanted to stay together, which I, which I applaud. I think it's great because any mm -hmm. one of them could have left and just said, "I'm going to go find something better." Um, but Legion uh, started as like a community, so it was like a community website, and a lot of what, I, like what you said, a lot of what FXO wants is something a little bit more behind the scenes. They want mm -hmm. the players because the players will bring what's behind the scenes, and that is um, the community ac uh, uh, access to FXO, the ability to get the word out there a little bit more, and there's some things that the staff at Legion were able to do that, that FXO just, just wasn't doing, you know, um, which is, you know, website and forums and, and getting out to community and kind of creating this community for FXO. So that was had a, a lot to do with it, too, but um, I think they were okay. I, I really believe in, in, in the conversations that I've seen that they're, they're excited to have the players on board. I mean, I think they understand just like anyone and just like us, you know, they're not the greatest players in the world, but um, they're solid players, and I think they were excited to have them on board and have them be a part of F FXO, and, and uh, it looks like it's it, it, it could definitely work. I mean, I already know. There, I came back this this afternoon from this morning. There were 500 new messages in the uh, in the channel where they're mm. kind of working things out. So I know they're working hard to kind of get this going, and and I think it's going to be good. Well, I mean, it, it doesn't look like they the picked. Doesn't, doesn't look. It's it a whole does, other vector of things. I was just going to say that it doesn't look like they picked up every single player. By the way, that, that I'm not sure that every single player came on board with it. Uh, this was yeah. uh, something that was presented to Legion. Okay, this is what we're doing. If you want to, you know, move from Legion to Take FXO, these right. are the options. Here we go. Why and I, I'm not sure that everyone went with it. Like, why wouldn't you? That's like, would you I rather be teamless or would you rather be on same FXO? Thing same thing we did with Vile. And there was like one or two players that didn't come because they were already kind of out of StarCraft or whatnot. But for mm -hmm. the most well, part, the whole okay. team came. Yeah, but I mean, don't forget as well, there's going to be a huge egotistical element of it, and it's like, right, this is my opportunity to basically bet a deal, you know, the, re the rest of the guys, you know, there's probably people in that team as cohesive as it is looking and thinking, actually, you know, I'm considerably better than you, uh, and this is a perfect opportunity for me to get my name out and, you know, blah, 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 rather than mm -hmm. do some kind of pre-forced merger. And you see this a lot with, with teams where um, one or two players have probably already had conversations because, you know, like we said, they disbanded beforehand. There's probably stuff already in the pipeline for one or two of the ones who didn't want to come along. And, you know, they've got this perfect excuse not to do it now because they can say well we just didn't want to be part of FXO we didn't want to be part of this merger reality what they're doing is they're trying to feather their own nests which is you know pretty much the uh, de rigor for uh, StarCraft 2 players right get what you can but while you can yeah see, I was still, I think the thing is that the market's way down though that's the whole thing like I think I think your initial like tenor is correct more so than, than the latter I think that like I mean even like top top StarCraft players today like we don't we're not interested like nobody is right now. Like everybody's yeah. full up. Everybody's full up. So I mean, <sighs> yeah, the under, the upper they'll make room for League of Legends. <laughs> yeah, so you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, that's that's probably true for us too. But the problem is, is that even with the money that Riot wants to give us, it's still not enough. Yeah, because the players and the teams want so so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the opportunity I feel like for players to be on teams is. 
you know, sl is decreasing. Like uh, every day we go. <laughs> every, and by the way, just so move. you know, like if you ever do that shit in our chat room, you're gonna get banned. So if you want to get banned for life, just post more screamers, and you'll just get banned, and you'll never chat again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry. We got we got the you know we got Mr. Mod here. <laughs> Mark is the the head mod of the channel here, man. <laughs> I mean, if Chris wants to unban you, that's fine. It's his, it's his damn show. But I mean, that's ridiculously annoying. Yes, yeah, it is. Exactly. Definitely. All right. Well, why don't we move on to the next topic, which is uh, you know it's pretty much what I wanted to get into this uh, episode, having Richard on, and it you know one of the things with climbing ladders, I want I definitely wanted one of the segments that we focus on, you know, just throughout time to be journalism and esports. And we've had Brent Ruiz from ESFI on before and Patrick and Achobo Pion and, and talk a little bit about journalism. But yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Your buddy. Uh, so, so now we're going to have King well, Richard on It's not even like a rivalry with the dude, but come on, like, just come on. That kickstart thing was absurd. But anyway, yeah, sorry. Uh, go on. <laughs> no, but I was just going to say, now we have King Richard on here. Uh, obviously, uh, editor-in-chief of oh, King, nice. King, Kadri. And Kadri's been covering esports. I mean, for those you don't know, I've been covering esports for like, I don't know, was it six, seven years now? And yeah, um, in longer yeah, than most StarCraft two players think esports is existed. Yeah, so yeah. yeah but, I mean, you know, it, it's kind of our own fault in a way because I think we made some terrible. I mean, not my fault, obviously, because I wasn't part of the uh, decision making process at this point. But uh, they made some terrible choices about what games to cover, mm -hmm. uh, focusing on kind of second tier titles. You know, and and going all in on source while ignoring 1.6 and stuff, which is why it's really annoying having to explain who we are over and over and over again. <laughs> and I've never liked the name. Like, what what is Cadred, right? It's not even a word. What can you do with it? So uh, there, there's lots of things that that's frustrating for me. But uh, I think we've built ourselves up into something pretty credible. I think we've done some good work in StarCraft 2 of late. So it's nice to get a little bit more exposure. But uh, you and I, you know, I kind of came in. I kind of came in late to this whole game when, you know, like, I, I had to have the whole history of things explained to me. And that site, your site's always been, like, seen, by my view, has always been, like, explained to me as, like, one of the sacred cows, like, the coveted altars of esports, you know, like, these guys have been here forever. Oh, that's nice. I'm just going to tell know, me like, about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they've been doing this forever. They've been doing this for a long time. I mean, they're, they're a little controversial, but, I mean, like, they have the right, they have the right, um, the right tone of heart, you know, like, that's what they're trying to do. And, uh... So I mean, you know, for for that for that to be the reputation that I was presented with over and over again, I think that that says something right there, you know. And I, that doesn't under un take away anything from what ESFI guys have been doing either. They've been doing their thing too. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's been a few, there's been a few really credible thing with uh, Definitive Esports and some other folks, yep. you know, mm -hmm. that have been trying to do some good stuff and uh, CSN, you know, and what Rachel's been doing. Everybody's got their niche kind of thing, you know, right now, and I think it's really cool to see it all kind of come together. And it's cool to see people be able to get on shows like this together and talk about things like this instead of, you know. You know, being so cutthroat like we are in other areas of the industry, which are unnecessary. Yeah, yeah I mean, let, let let's talk about you know esports journalism like today. So, like, what do you guys think of the current state of it, and and what is esports journalism these days? Because a lot of people disagree as to what it is. I think so. Kind of want to ask you that first, Richard. Uh, right. Well, first of all, like, I mean, I've never really defined myself as an esports journalist. I don't really like the term uh, you know it's going to sound really knobby and pretentious and i apologize in advance for that people but like you know f for me i've always been a journalist first you know it's what i studied it's what i graduated in i've, I've worked for magazines for newspapers uh, and then i'm just ha I happen to be someone who writes about esports right because you know and i understand the journalistic ethics and 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 practices and all of that other stuff in esports, an esports journalist to me is something very different. A lot of the time, it's a guy who's tried and failed at other things. Then they, well, I'm just going to write. And now it's not even about writing so much as it is about video. So you don't even need to have a good, solid foundation in, in writing. Or now you can just be a streamer and, or a host, even, and you seem to get lumped in with, with journalists. So uh, in esports right now, you know, we are suffering, I think, from a real lack of uh, goods talented journalists, like people who could take their skill set, go into the real uh, world of journalism and, and actually achieve things and, and, you know, do things. We've got a lot of people that are rank amateurs that don't understand the basics. And because the talent pool is so shallow, they're inflated into false positions. Um, the other thing that annoys me, I would say, about esports journalism is the way they want to be celebrities in their own right. So many of them want to be front and center when it should be the work and, and the subjects that, you know, are the important thing. And certainly no one knows who the hell I am 
you know, outside a very select few, and that's, you know, I could, I could do all of this shit, I could be on camera all the time, I could be jabbering away in a like I'm going to do tonight, in a very rare opportunity <laughs> to do so, but what would that achieve, you know, I need to be the guy who writes the stories, the story's the more important thing, I'm, I'm just the guy who presents it, so, yeah, I, I think esports journalism as it stands, it's, it's, it's suffering because no one really understands what journalism is, and until we rectify that and alter that, and you know, we are going to have problems in how we're perceived by the mainstream media. All right, let's talk about that. So, what yeah. needs to change in regards to that? I mean, is it, you know, obviously when Patrick was on here and even Brent, I mean, I think one of the issues right now with with um, I guess journals, you know, just journalistic organizations is that there's a lack of money right now. There's a lack of funding. Um, and a lot of folks that are writing, you know, a lot of these writers that write for, you know, probably you guys and ESFI, I mean, they're all volunteers. I, I mean, a lot of them are volunteers. So is, is that the main issue right now that's going on is that we just, you know, we're not paying people to, to do this content. So of course the quality of the content or the motivation to create this content is going to be lacking. Well, I, I don't think so. I, I definitely don't agree with that. And I can talk about my own experiences. Uh, like put it this way, if you think getting into esports journalism is hard, Go and do it in the real world and see if you find it any easier because mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the cutthroat nature of the journalism industry, especially in the UK, down in London, where unless I've got a big pair of breasts, you know, I'm getting there, but, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, you know or shoulder pads and, I, uh, you know, my dad went to school with this other guy's dad at Eton and I'm going to do that to get a job making the coffee at a major newspaper. The nepotism and all of the shit that goes with it in mainstream newspapers is incredible. It's beyond a joke it's beyond anything you'll encounter in esports so i'm always sick of hearing about the old boys brigade and how they hold people back and oh we don't pay people to do it like to break into writing for my first ever newspaper i had to do a load of stuff i had to run up loads of debt on credit cards and uh, to cover my own stories to travel to places to cover the, the stories and then try and sell the articles and a lot of time i couldn't sell them so i lost money to, to do it um, but, but it was what I wanted to do it was what I was passionate about and when it came to esports I had a great job I was like a manager of a mobile phone warehouse like we used to sell to you know mobile phone contracts to people who didn't really need them and make loads of money in, in commission and I had loads of cash for someone in their mid-twenties like I was just blowing it like you know I had uh, a, a powerful thirst I was I was drunk every night it was amazing it was great it was just it was a great time but I still wanted to do something and uh, in in journalism and I was freelancing and I got into esports mm -hmm. and uh, you know from there I was like well I'm just gonna volunteer it keeps the mind sharp keeps the tool sharp uh, and maybe some people will get some enjoyment out of it then when I couldn't be bothered anymore with selling mobile phones when I realized that was like a very unfulfilling career and I certainly don't recommend it to anybody uh, <laughs> what I decided to do was I thought well I'm not gonna take any steps back bullshit I'm not gonna do that so my friend my best friend who just got married right uh, so I, I totally you know p pardon my French but I totally fucked up his marriage probably because they're divorced now but uh, he uh, he <laughs> put me up in his spare serious he put me up in his spare room cause I said right I, I want to make a living out of this esports thing I, I want to do it I, I can't go back to an office I'll go mad so I was staying in his spare room and selling stuff for like you know $25 here $100 there please pay me 200 pounds to write on your website real pathetic amounts of money um, and then CGS came in championship gaming series and they offered me stupid money like they did with everybody else right and from there I managed to carve a career out of it so I'm sick of this boo hoo hoo let's set up a Kickstarter please give me money it's not about that if you want to do it and you're good enough you're gonna find a niche and there's gonna be people out there that are gonna give you a leg up it's just that simple it's how much do you want to do it and at Christ I know I made a lot of sacrifices and here I am as a 30 year old man having to explain to my family uh, what I do for a living you know m parents massively disappointed because I'm not writing for like you know the times or something you know so uh, yeah but but it is what it is and if you want to go somewhere you can do it so the idea that you've got to pay money to get quality content horseshit never having it so I mean it's funny because I mean you say all that stuff. I mean you're saying all that stuff right now, but but you know on the other hand you were complaining that you know a lot of the stuff that's going on right now like you don't you don't think is real. You know a lot of the stuff isn't really yeah, but journalism. they get money for it. That's the that's the perverse thing. Like well, I can go I mean. grab yeah. your 
full of real talented writers. You know, all the volunteers on Cadre that have actually, you know, we sit down and we do regular sessions together where I go over, this is what you need to do, you should try this, okay, you're ready, and now try this investigative piece, go here, use this resource. But, you know, we actually work on their, uh, you know, skill set. I, I pride myself on that. Anyone who writes at Cadre is going to leave a better writer. That has to be the goal, you know. But then you see someone like, I don't know, I mean, we've already talked about Rachel. I don't want to single anybody out, but Jesus, like, you know, you know she's making top dollar, but that ain't journalism. It just isn't. I'm sorry. And it, it's depressing that, you know, when you see something like Team Razor, and I love the Razor guys. We do a lot of work with them. I love their products. I'm not trying to endorse them or plug them. I just need personal preference, right? But, uh, you know, she in their Team Razor thing, she's the representative of the journalists. You know, Christ, like, what's happening? <laughs> so, uh, you know, this, this, is, this is the problem we've got, that the people that aren't actually that good and don't have any of the skills that I've talked about are getting paid loads and loads and loads of money for not doing a whole lot of much and towing some bitchy little corporate line. And the real, real talent that's out there doesn't get a look in, and they get disheartened because they're like, well, I've volunteered already for two years, and I ain't seen a bean. So it's right. this disparity. It's not about the money isn't there. It's about the people who get it don't deserve it. Mm. All right. Let's, let's, okay, let's talk about If you're going to bring up Rachel, then. Okay, let's talk about what Rachel, I mean, Rachel obviously gets a lot of these interviews. You know, she does hosting, but that, that's a whole separate thing. But, yeah. you know, a lot of the things that she does is she interviews players, right? So interviewing, reporting, that's obviously kind of falls under the whole journalism side. So talk to me about what you would rather see. I mean, what do you want to see? I mean, do you think the, the interviews are too fluff? Or well, I'll, 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 let, I'll let the other guys come in because honestly, yeah. I'll I'll just run over the top of you, and I don't want to be that guy. So, uh, you know, but I mean, you know, hopefully, you guys can see what I'm getting at. Yep. Mm -hmm. John, well, I don't think that I don't think that Rachel makes a lot of money. I think I think the whole concept that anybody's making a lot of money in this industry is a little phony, actually. I don't think anybody's making a lot of money. Well, well compared well, compared, yeah. compared to zero, compared, I mean, it's it's a lot. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> I think, I think Rachel, yeah, some well, I think maybe Rachel makes a living, other people don't. Mm -hmm. That's the issue that's being taken. But I mean, I, I think that that's an industry-wide issue that needs to be addressed. You know, you know, I don't, I really don't think, and I've talked with her before. I think even about this is that I don't really think even Rachel sees herself as as necessarily a journalist, mm. um, because she's not actively seeking out, you know, behind-the-scenes stories. She's She's looking for something that people will find interesting, and, and she's putting it out there for them. I don't really think that she considers herself, um, you know, a, a journalist in that sense. I mean, she do, she doesn't do writing, um, and usually when I think of journalists, I think of somebody that that writes, that is able to sit down and write about what they do, and I I just I don't really think she feels that way. I think it's something different. I don't I don't know. But so maybe you know again it, it's like saying I, I'm I'm real sorry to put a front and center because we've done an interview with her. I'm sure she's a lovely person but uh, you know ultimately we I guess the problem is the application of labels you know and what we consider to be a journalist but you know uh, to, to pick up on Mark's point if you're making a living uh, in esports yeah I mean you are one of the elite few you know like I mean I I am in that position I don't have any of the jobs except what freelance sports writing I do um, and I make a very you know good standard of living I, and I don't feel bad about that I feel like I you know I've, I've definitely paid my dues but uh, um, you know we are a very small number and I think if you are one of those p people lucky enough to be doing that you, you know, there's, you've got to set a very high standard to justify it, and I don't think that's always happening, especially in journalism. I think the people at the top, you know, it's like that's what made me laugh so much about Patrick whining about it because this guy, I mean, nepotism, right? Like we've already talked about that a little bit. This guy had so many leg ups from his friends who were already at the top. You know, the DJ Weeds putting him out front and center, the Slashes putting him front and center, and then he made out like he'd never had a break. You know, by the end of it, I mean, it was just like, dude, like, you got way luckier and way more attention than better writers. It's just that simple. And uh, you, that happened because of your personal relationships. And then to, like, whine about it, you've just got to hold yourself up to a higher standard, you know, and try and, and be like, okay, actually, you know, uh, I need to justify the money that I'm getting paid because there's another 50 people that would kill for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, there's a lot. That I think a lot of people need to justify to say that 
Jonathan D. Rockefeller needed to justify the fact that he accumulated almost a trillion dollars in funds because of his monopolization of the oil industry in the late 1800s. In fact, the U.S. government said that they needed to justify that to them too, but it didn't change the fact that he still got over a trillion dollars in personal funds based on his monopolization of the oil industry in the late 1800s. I don't understand so what? the word you just said. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> what the hell? Like, like, so what? It's a so what point. Like, so what? There's people here who were here first and they're making more money and they don't deserve it and so what? That's well, all it, it's, it's, it's a big problem because we work in an industry where we've got limited resources. Everyone's always playing the fiddle and, and talking about how we got no money to do this and no money to do that and we got to merge to do this and we got to do that and blah, blah, blah. So if that's the case, then how we spend that money and who gets that money is pretty important. And if you want to have like real journalists out there writing real yeah. things that people care about, then at least give it to the people that deserve it. And if someone isn't living up to that reputation and is doing like consistently, uh, you know, not bad, but you know, like if they're falling consistently short of what a journalist should be, then they got to be called out on it. Yeah, but and, people you know, at the top, Richard, they don't know any different either. I mean, the people well, that make well, decisions to put people on board said, "Hey, I want uh, you to write." I mean, a lot of them have no clue what they're even looking at. They're like, well, I'm going to trust this guy that he knows what he's talking about, he knows how to write, and they won't look over it. I mean, when I was at ESL, and, I, and I'm not a great writer either. I'm a horrible speller. When I was at ESL, um, there was a gentleman, I mean, uh, he, <laughs> uh, Trevor, basically, from Gottfrag, you know, he claimed to be a good writer, and every time he put something out, even I had to look at it and go, are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. Uh, but he didn't, you know, people would write articles, and he would just look at it and go, okay, that's good. So it's, it doesn't help that the people at the top are the people that are bringing on these so-called journalists. They don't know what they're looking at either. I mean, I'm not a person to look I mean, at yeah, something. Yeah, I want to... I wanna, Echo that, John, because I think that you're. I think that as much as I've been kind of countering this issue so far, I think that Quantic has a press team, right? We have a media team that put out 48 interview videos. I mean, 48 videos at the last MLG event, multicam, steady cam, high profile, high high definition audio, overlaid uh, translation, captioning, everything. Right? Who watched them? Fucking nobody watched them. <laughs> well, that's because I mean, right? that's, and, that's and that's high quality content. Yeah, and that's because that's because we didn't have DJ Wheat or we didn't have, you know, somebody with a big name, you know, doing that. So what are we going to do this time? We're going to do another 50 videos this weekend, and nobody's going to watch them again. And then next year we're going to come back and we're going to go to Razor, we're going to go to Alienware, we're going to say, let us do your production, and you bring the personalities, because that'll likely work better. Um, that will yeah, work I mean, like, better, every, but everybody's just doing what they got to do, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, but like what what yeah, I admire all about that is. When you're bringing hundred thousand dollars worth of gear, including like you know red cameras and everything else to do time lapse footage, and nobody watches your shit, that sucks. People don't like that. I mean, imagine all the volunteers were doing that work. They're like, damn, you know, we did. Yeah, we did it, and it, it, it does. It is demotivating. But again, yeah. you're doing the right thing because you're holding yourself up to that standard, and that's what I'm talking about. Like all of these cash cows and like you know the, these assholes who think, uh, oh well, we got you know three million viewers. It means our shit's righteous. Pathetic, like you know, some of the stuff I've seen that's been put out front and center in terms of esports content is laughable. It's a joke. If it was in any other industry, nobody would read it, nobody would watch it. If it was a sports piece, it would be rightfully laughed at. The stand is terrible, but because you've got people that control the channels uh, through which you access stuff, they're they're the gatekeepers right now, you know. And and you're absolutely right. But but what? You, but first and foremost, what you have to do is you have to commit and be like, I don't care if 30 people watch this. It's good. It's it's mm -hmm. it's you know, and and once you have that pride in your work, that it, that for me is the most important attribute that any you know, e journalist is going to have, man. It's so funny because we had our, our our main. We were releasing a new YouTube channel this weekend. We had our main channel last. It was full of Battlefield subscribers. So literally during that weekend, not only did nobody watch our hey. video, but we got like forty-five to fifty trash comments on each video, and we lost twenty-five hundred subscribers over the weekend. Okay. So like it was like a devastating weekend, and basically like if that just goes to show you how we can be doing good content and still fucking up, it's real easy. Like yeah. this esports thing, this esports thing is hard to do, right? It's it's even harder not to fuck it up. And I think it's you know, and one of those things that what we learned what we learned that weekend is we're gonna do this new channel now, right? But now we got to start over from absolute scratch and zero. You know what we did half through the weekend? We went to Team Liquid and we said, hey, we have all this quality content, like Scarlet interview, everything else, right? And the whole nine. 
can we just give it to you to put on your YouTube? Because we, we don't have anything to do with it. We can't do anything with it. They're like, no, we don't want it. Well, I mean, see, I, mean, I, I don't know what to say at this point of it, but definitely you know, one thing that, that has to accompany journalism, at least in esports today, is marketing, right? I think marketing mm -hmm. has a huge, huge... I mean, yeah, because nobody's going to read it. I mean, nobody's going to watch a video. Nobody's going to like watch this show or this bot of this show or any video, whether it's you know a great interview or not, unless it's marketed correctly. Because that's well, just how. Chris, Chris oh, let's, no, let's use the example that. that we went yeah. through last week. I mean, we put out. Uh, we helped a, a young guy who he was very Apparently. nervous. Yeah, he was very nervous about putting out this series of articles that he had done, uh, mainly because he didn't he, he didn't want to come off as trying to self promote himself and things like that. And so he and he hadn't dealt with Reddit and before before. So Chris, um, uh, another guy, myself, we we kind of helped him see how best to market uh, the product that he was putting out. Now. Uh, again, it's a double-edged sword because you can market the shit out of something and everyone can tune in and that's part of the problem is everyone likes something because it was marketed well. It doesn't mean it was good. I thought his sure. stuff was really good and we were able to help him market it and it, it definitely it got some play and people, you know, people uh, tuned in or they read uh, the articles and things. Yeah, because Richard, I mean, you, you can make brilliant, brilliant work, but I mean, and take pride in it, you know, and, and mm. you know, have the few folks that, that do read it, you know, tell you that it's great work. But it, and if it doesn't have an impact, then, I mean, it, is it really that valuable? I mean, you know, whoa, 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 it has whoa, to get out there. For I mean, me, this whole marketing thing, like marketing and journalism need to be separate. I mean, they need to be. There's no wow. getting away from it. And there's okay. so many areas where uh, journalism fails because of the marketing element. There's so many areas where the organizations uh, feel like they can fuck with you because of the marketing element. Uh, there's so many bad things that come out of it. And like I say, I, I, I don't care if nobody reads, uh, re reads a piece or sees me doing a video interview. Uh, but what I do know is that when people see it, they talk about it. And when they talk about it, that encourages more people to do it. And that's the kind of marketing that I dig, like word of mouth, you know, like, like old school Organic. shit. Like, this guy, this guy is good, and you should check his stuff out, you know? And, and that's, that's all I want to offer. That's kind of what the whole internet was founded on, right? It was the whole concept yeah. of, you know, you can do quality shit, and the people will just come to you. If you build it, they will come. But unfortunately... That's why I love Reddit, man. That's why I love Reddit. Like, I know not a lot of people that's do. That's why I love Reddit, too. I love Reddit. Yeah, I do. In its purest form, in its purest form... <laughs> it is. The, the it's, you know, it, it, it's like-minded people directing you to content that they know you're going to like. And, in, and it's completely honest. You cannot trick it. You cannot rig it. You know, it, uh, there's so many, uh, you know, kind of fail-safes in place to prevent people ultimately exploiting uh, what Reddit is in its purest form. And I think it's brilliant. And certainly as we've got more into Reddit, you know, it's been a huge part in uh, attracting more traffic to the website. And I'm yeah, but you don't see Reddit as a cesspool? I mean, well, literally, no, like not a at all. cesspool of not shit. At all. Not at all, man. No, 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 no. Let me tell you why. <laughs> because the shit is so easy to filter through. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's so easy to filter through. All you got to do is just ignore the shit and be a big enough boy about it. Yeah, but it you to know people don't do that. That's the problem, too. Oh, because they latch onto it and they want drama. And they're like, oh, my God, so-and-so got their panties in the water. Da -da 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 -da. Well, so whatever. Yeah, I mean, like, like, a good interview might never be number one on Reddit with, like, a billion views, yeah, but like the point is, it's going to get top 10, it's going to get top 20, and you're going to see sensible discourse in there. You actually do see it on Reddit. I know people like to pretend that it doesn't exist, but it, uh, if I was to direct you some of the co comments and our stuff, you know, really like your interviews, uh, blah, 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 why don't you use this style, and we're having a discussion about it. Those people are amazing. Those are the people I want to reach through my work. I'm not interested in trying to trick them into doing it. I'm not interested in having DJ Wee send a tweet out to his followers saying why I'm awesome and blah, blah, blah. Look, there's the work. Go find it. And I'll never, you know, never forget Jerry from VVV going, I don't need to sit there and watch them all in their little laughing horse. Her, 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 with Slasher going, oh my god, this is so amazing. And DJ Weed going, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> he went on these rants. It was so great, man. I mean, this I, is back before he worked for Riot. Now he works for Riot, so he can't do that anymore. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, get, I get what you're saying, Richard, but I, I, still, I still kind of <laughs> disagree with you a bit because even even... There is a guy that DJ Wee can tweet to that is somebody that absolutely would love your work. And then they would love your work following that. And just, yeah. you know, just having the ability to be, have those, guys, you know, those people be exposed to your work, I, I feel like that's... But if they care enough, they're going to find it anyway. It's not, not hard. I'm, that's not I'm not hiding. Maybe that's I'm not hiding. 
cares? That, that's, yeah, you're not hiding, but how many people, I mean, like, like you said, like how many people don't know about your site? right now which yeah, well, it's crazy but, but again you know, i'm not gonna i mean what 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 i'm not gonna go around a house and i like, take them out and buy them fucking dinner just so they, well that's, you know, that's not the same what okay. extremes do we need to go yeah, here it's just like i'm not gonna jump through enough hoops if they care about <laughs> good writing and um, what i'm seeing from the community is they do if they care about good interviews and what i'm seeing from the community is they do then they're gonna find they're gonna go out and they're gonna find it I don't need to patronize them and, and trick them into finding it. And I, I don't want those people that can be tricked in that way, to be honest, because I don't think they're really in a position to know objectively whether something's good or not. So any praise that is forthcoming, you know, is nonsense. Well, the, the, well, I've got to say this, Richard. It's, oh, it's it, traffic wow. obsessed stuff. <laughs> what you're that, saying here is like uh, either the, the, the grace of Cadred, because you guys are Cadred in the first place, you can pull that shit off. Or no. maybe the death of maybe the death of Cadred, but either way, <laughs> I like on. it. I like I like the attitude. On. I like uh, my it. Boss, my boss is probably watch this back tomorrow, and uh, there's going to be a lot <laughs> fucking clear about it. But at the end of the day, on my personal views, my personal views are I'm not going to jump through hoops to drive false traffic to, to work that you know look if people cared enough if the community care enough and they're always talking about how they do then fine they will find it build well, it that's and not your job though either fit. that's the marketing person's job well sure. again I mean, I, you, I just, you, you don't really need to care anyway because you're you're what you're doing is writing and and <laughs> and providing a, a service and letting your marketing people handle how that service gets in front of other people yeah, I, I, and, and you know, we, we do employ people like that, but not really from the kind of esports journalism perspective. The onus is on us to kind of pimp our stuff out. And look, I mean, maybe it's hypocritical given what I've just said. Yeah, we, have, we, have, we, have, we have a Twitter, right? And we post things on Reddit and we post things on Team Liquid. Mm -hmm. But I'm not doing that to be like, oh, I, I want to get an extra 50,000 page impressions and that's going to make me X amount of money. I, I don't care. Like, there's the, the, you know, ultimately, it's just about there's the work. Tell me what you think. Come and find it. And then, you know, we actually, now that people know and we have that presence within StarCraft 2, I have to do it a lot less. People follow me, you know, like people follow our Facebook, people are automatically doing it and automatically, you know, I see people retweeting our stuff now without any prompting. And that's great and that's amazing and that's the stuff I want to build, not this artificial, um, we, you know, we, we get somebody with three million followers to tweet it and if you throw enough shit at a wall, something's going to stick. I just, I hate that attitude. Like the work's got to be about so much more than that it's well, it be... sounds like you have a passion for writing and that you uh, unlike some people that are in uh esports journalism like you said earlier they're doing it to get a leg up to to get noticed to to be e-famous um and you have done this before in a setting outside of esports and your focus is on good writing period and yeah, you're, it's, it's, you're not looking yeah. for everything else that people are looking for in esports was just to make a name for themselves yeah, I mean, you know, like, uh, I got a little bit seduced by the whole e-fame thing back when I wasn't making any money. It's nice to be the volunteer that everyone loves, you know, like, oh, he's doing this shit for free and it's so awesome and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and you, you get to read that back and you're like, yeah, you know, fuck it, man. I, I feel pretty good about that. But, um, you know, now that I, I'm paid and I make a living out of it now obviously I'm the hated guy right because you know he's he he's get he get oh he gets money for that shit blah 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 same people you know just two years difference and people who used to love you hate you um but you realize quickly that again the yardstick by which you're going to be measured by isn't comments on a forum not comments on reddit not down votes likes up votes retweets it's none of that shit it's just the work itself like in 50 years someone would look at an article that i wrote and say actually the dude could write okay and that's it and that's all it's got to boil down to none of this let's jump through hoops for traffic please like our stuff blah blah i just find it an anathema to what journalism's about yeah, I just also want to just quickly announce uh, the presence of a little of a pro player in our chat of uh, Leia, aka Puck, formerly of Root, who's Yo. actually uh, watching the yeah. show. Yeah, so thanks for thanks for coming out and watching the show. Yeah, what's up, Puck or Leia? Uh, he's a good friend. Let's let's move on to the next topic, which is I wanted to ask you about um, really the I mean. I would say that there's a lack of investigative journalism. I mean, obviously, we've talked about just journalism in general, yeah, but there's definitely a lack of investigative journalism. And I want to ask you guys, why is that? I mean, is it because of the fear of being blackballed by all the organizations and then just never being able to do any kind of content with them? Or is it something else? 
who's going first on Anybody. this one. This should be I, good. I, I, I want to hear about fifty typing like this. So. Okay, I'll say this: that I know for a fact that there's been articles and things that have been put together uh, that were investigative reporting, I guess, um, and it was decided they weren't going to release it, mm. and that was really a lot. Uh, had a, had more to do with the fact that they were in fear of being blackballed. Let me look what happens. We know what happens. Um, the, yeah, the you see people make sure it happens. Yeah. Gwen, you yeah. know, um, there's and there's there's countless other examples of people who basically, whether they were right or wrong, factual or factual, or whatever the case was, they came out based on something that they believed within themselves was unjust, and they've basically gotten shut the fuck out because of it. Yeah, especially if it made somebody or an organization or, or a group or a team that maybe, you know, a lot of the community are, are fans of seem in a more negative light, then it's instantly, you know, they get trashed on. And, and it's, it's unfortunate because, you know, you should be able to, like, have your differences and then grow off past those and, you know, not be... Well, it's know. not just trashed on. I mean, it's literally... You're never going to be doing any content with exactly, any of right. my players ever again. You know yeah, that like that type Gwyn, of stuff. Gwyn's applications for all major leagues were instantly declined. Like yeah, really? Or leagues? Yeah. Like that's mm -hmm. come on, really? Like with, that's with, too, with, too with some replies as simple as "We will no longer be working with you." Yeah. Right. Exactly. There you, you go. go. But again, I mean, it, uh, you know, like what we're talking about, with you got to hold yourself up to the highest standard. You really can't give a shit. You really can't. And uh, you know, I'm lucky. The company I work for, Heaven Media Man, they bat me to the hilt. And don't think every time I write at one of these articles, and I've, I've done several investigative pieces, I've exposed liars, cheats, thieves. I actually enjoy doing it. Um, <laughs> you know, but, but when it happens, uh, yeah, of course the phone gets rang, and I get a or call from my boss. Red eye, and you could have a voice like this, in which case everyone loves you. <laughs> well, I die. I, I love I, Red Eye, by the way. I'm a huge Red Eye fan. Oh, boy. Here <laughs> we go. I won't, I won't bring Paul in, in, in this conversation. <laughs> yeah. um, but look, you know, like, here's, here's what I do know. For example, uh, and again, probably it's going to uh, cause some shit, but, you know, it, it's the truth. Um, it, right, ESL, not paying prize money, right? I think everyone knows about that. I don't think mm -hmm. I'm breaking a great trade secret. ESL. <laughs> Are behind in paying a lot of the, their tournament money out. Not IEM. I have to separate the two. But um, ESL certainly on a you know the kind of CSS leagues and ladders, uh, COD four money, you know that kind of thing. They're way behind, about two fucking years behind, which to me is appalling and unacceptable. And we've wrote about it several times on on Cadred, and they've always been like, oh, can you not, please? No, no, no. And they've picked up the phone, and my boss has backed me and said, is he telling a lie? No. Is it true? Yes, right, fine. Then it's going out, and you've got a responsibility to deal with that negative press. Now, I like to think ESL are big boys enough to realize that we all got to work together. Esports is a, a small place, but it's my job. I, I've got I've got some responsibilities as a journalist, right? And you know, not many, <laughs> but but I've got some. And the first the first fucking responsibility is tell the truth, right? Like I got to do that. I got to do that. If I don't do that, I'm a corporate shill. I'm a bitch. Nobody should ever listen to anything I say ever again. If I sell out and tell a lie to protect something for money or for some vested interest i'm a piece of shit don't listen to what i say ever again and i I'd have no one to blame but myself so you 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 have a responsibility to do that but equally there's these people out there that don't have a voice because esports is you know it's it, there's all these niches and cliques and they can't talk about these things the the, the player that just the the player who won money in a small tournament that hasn't been paid it for two years, who does he go to? You know, what arbitrary, uh, you know, kind of uh, ombudsman is there? There isn't one, right? All, the, all that you can do is expose these people. And, you know, when you do that, you're actually doing good work. And whether they know it or not, you're helping esports. By, you're not hindering it. They'll always tell you, oh, if you tell the truth, you're going to bring esports down and we might lose some sponsors and then no one's getting paid. Well, good, because your business model stank and you stink and you should be paying money to people when you owe money. It's as simple as that. So you can't get hung up on it. You can't get guilty about it. Like, oh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? You've got to just be bold, front and center. Um, one of the things that I'm really proud of with Cadred is we, we do that. We don't sit on those stories. 
And we got a very good track record of not doing that. And I don't think we, we ever will. And I certainly hope we never will because we've got bosses that understand the importance of it. These are people that know esports inside out, know what's good for esports. And um, that you know, and they trust in the staff and trust in people like me. Just, you know, the editors. Just for a reference point here too, Ombuds Ombudsman is a is a representative of the public interest. Oh, come on, <laughs> um, Richard, what you're saying? Thanks, about, Mr. Dictionary. What you're saying about it being good for esports is exactly true. In fact, that this has been discussed uh, before, obviously many times, uh, especially in regards to ESL. Mm -hmm. And I would say it was a few months ago, maybe it was almost a year ago. This came up again. There was a bunch of stuff on Team Liquid, and they were, all the organizations uh, basically had to step into the thread and, and say, hey, we're going to pay, blah, blah, blah. And immediately within a few weeks, people were getting paid. Uh, yeah. And so mm, yep. by exposing that, either the if they're really weak and their business model sucks and they can't find a way to get the money or they're not communicating, that's like one of the biggest things. You communicate with the players. Um, then they're going to fall away, and that's okay. We don't need them because they're not paying. I mean, they're not really doing anything good for esports at that point anyway. And then yeah. those who are serious about growing in esports are going to end up paying, um, you know, even if it's got to come out of their own pocket or, or whatever. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I, I think, look, I, and th this is, this is to come back to the thing before we go off on a, uh, I do this all the time. I rant loads, man. I think I've got to start taking some, like, hypertension medication or some shit. I don't know, but uh, it really riles me so much whenever we talk about stuff like this. But, um, you know, like, to get back to your point about investigative journalism, it's not just the fact that uh, these big companies will shut you out. Uh, because I don't think always they will. I think uh, in a lot of cases, sometimes they can't. They they really can't afford oh, they'll to. Soak it up if, they'll soak up it up if they can't if they can't help themselves. Mm, Sometimes exactly. that happens. Yeah, and 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 it, it, a big problem that we've got is people I mean, come up face it, like not even not even Alex Garfield from EG could could hold himself back on publishing his opinion on Nanny Wa's pro brush. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, yeah, and you know, you know but like, even though that even though that puts spotlight right on what we're doing, I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, it's one of those things where people have certain strong enough opinions about it, they're going to go public with those opinions. Yeah, but the hypocrisy yeah, but of that is not... if somebody posted yeah. something about Alex that was not in a favorable light, you wouldn't hear the end of it. Yeah, of course. And, and you know, that, that, it, that is the issue. It's like you've got you've to take, I mean, right, if you're smart, and you want to climb the ladder to, uh, you know, use the term of the <laughs> show. That's right, you. baby. There we are. Thanks. That's it. I'm, it's off. I'm going home. Come on, <laughs> exactly. I'll put you in. Uh, you know, like, if you do want to do that, then, yeah, obviously, what you've got to do is you've got to p play smart, pick and choose your battles, smile at, you know, some guys when really you think they're an asshole and all this other stuff and say nice things about them. That isn't for me. That I can't bring myself to do that I'd, whether it's an age thing or whatever i just tired of doing that you have to do that in the office smile at the boss you know and blah 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 i don't want to ever have to do that to subjugate myself and especially if people i know are doing some you know heinous shit or whatever so i think what's important is people need to not be afraid to take these people on because ultimately what's the worst that can happen what is the worst that can happen okay you're you reckon you're never going to get an interview with a you know a, a top player from that organization there's plenty of other ones and it gives you carte blanche. It can be very liberating. It can free you up because now all of a sudden, every time I want to do a piece of editorial, I don't have to be afraid. I can say that player's playing bad, you know, uh, without, without fearing the wrath of uh, the organization. I can now tell the truth. I have, I have freed myself uh, to do that. So I think if people, it, it's like a lot of things. Until you know uh, what's going to happen, there's obviously that fear element. But once you realize... You know, actually, it's not that bad. It's not that bad burning a bridge. It's not that bad being considered an asshole. Uh, invariably, what always happens is two years down the road, those people come back and you have a healthy, healthier respect, a healthy relationship. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's just not that bad. You, you've got nothing to be afraid of. These people cannot crush your career. They can't stifle your voice. And so even if they get paid, what are, you, what are they going to do? Take away yeah, money you don't just, have? Yeah, exactly. I'm a volunteer. Okay, so this website don't want to print my stuff. I'll just start a blog. No problem. Here you go. And now I'm on Twitter. And now all of a sudden I'm getting all this traffic that would have been going to that website because they want to read what I've got to say. 
I mean, I've always said, believe me, like, I mean, uh, you know, if, if uh, for whatever reason, because I, I like to say I'm an older guy, I don't think I'll be in esports forever. Believe me, when, when I'm out of esports, there's going to be like maybe one or two uh, just little things that I'm just going to leave and be like, oh, by the way, guys, <laughs> peace. And, you know, and here it is. And, it's <laughs> and then I'm just going to like, deal with that, right? Because at the end of the day, why not? You know, why the hell not? What's the worst that could happen, man? And, uh, you know, I, I honestly think. Uh, people get way too hung up on this idea of this esports Illuminati. They're kind of right to, because it does exist. But like all mafias of the mediocre, um, they can't do as much as what they think they can. Simple as that. Well, I mean, it's you know, obviously, definitely, you're 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 encouraging boldness, I guess. You know, with a lot of the writers and and journalists today, and you know, it, it's great to hear from you, given that you're, you know, you're basically, you know, editor in chief of you know, Cadred. So I. I hope that, you know, I hope this kind of gets across to a lot of the writers that are watching the show or will watch this VOD and, you know, people will be a little bit more bold about trying to, re you know, report news, you know, report behind the scenes kind of news. Because, you know, one of the things I wanted to bring up, you know, to, you know, just kind of segmenting to the next topic is how social media has kind of changed, you know, reporting and journalism, you know, it's like today. And one of the things that I, I, a particular example I wanted to bring up was really just all the Slayers drama, you know, with Jessica and Jeez. stuff. I know. I, I'm not going to, we're not going to talk about the actual drama, but I just kind of oh. wanted to talk a little bit about just how, uh, for instance, how Sl you know, Slasher was reporting it. And it, oh. it felt like more he was just trying to sift through just all the, the tweets, really, that, that are available to everybody anyways. You know, I think a lot of people were, you know, were um, reading them all anyways, whether it's on Reddit or just on Twitter. But he was just kind of, you know, I guess, organizing it into a, just a more, more um, consumable fashion. I mean, is that what reporting's turning into these days? I mean, given that, that social networking is, I mean, social, you know, social media is just yeah. so so huge these days it, well yeah it, but it's it's lazy and uh to, to give you the example with rod uh, like i know rod I, I like rod he's a cool guy uh we talk we get along um but I, what i will say is you know he does like to present him as being the fucking you know the the uh <laughs> oracle right like the, oracle. the guy who knows the shit that no one else knows and a lot of the time it's emperor's new clothes man he's just uh, but it's kind of marketing. I understand why he's doing it. Uh, you know, he needs to appear to be that guy. That's cool. But it's, you know, a lot of the time he's doing exactly what you said. He's just sifting through some tweets, reading between the lines, getting a guy to translate this one and blah, blah, blah. And then he comes out as saying he's got an anonymous source or whatever. And maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. I mean, that's an old journalistic trick anyway. You're not supposed to do it, but of course it happens uh, where people just say they know something. So they attribute it to an anonymous source. You know, that, that goes on in these puts all the time. Why the hell not? You know, I'm, I can say I haven't uh, dabbled in the dark arts of journalism, but I know people who do. And ultimately, to get the truth out, it's about what you're willing to bend. But anyway, that's a side issue. Um, so, yeah, but like, you know, I, I, this social media bullshit, it encourages laziness. I mean, like, and it's not just in esports journalism. It's in real sports journalism as well. Like, and again, you know, I, I do some writing about it, but um, if I was to give you an example, and we went to Sky Sports News, you know, like the top 10 stories, f five of them would be involving a footballer's Twitter. Like, like I care. <laughs> These people barely have brains anyway. Like, their 140 word summary of anything they're going to think or feel really isn't newsworthy. It's, it, but it's just an easy story. It's uh, how you generate controversy in an esports, of course, when you've got people who are lazy and, and uh, looking for the next big, big drama because that's what gets traffic that's what gets comments that's what gets views um then obviously oh my god he just tweeted that <laughs> Let, let's let's talk about this oh my yeah. god he, he's retweeted someone else's <laughs> negative tweet inferring <laughs> agreement oh my god Come on, guys, let's actually get back to writing some real fucking news. You know, because uh, it, what what Stefano tweets and blah blah blah. Unless it's something really, really earth shattering, it's probably not worth writing about. Fact. Well, I mean, I don't think it's a lot of writers that are writing about. It. I think it's just folks on Reddit that just happen to create threads. I mean, that. that you know I, know what I mean, those are doing it too these days, oh, man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> okay. I'll be honest again, again. I'm not going to be a hypocrite before people start linking to where Cadred have done it in the chat. Of course, we have because you know we've got to serve up what we think people want in the current climate. You know, that's what people want to talk about. So and so tweeted this, and so and so said this, and this is on Reddit, and here's a yeah. screenshot. I call but it the Jersey so Jersey Shore syndrome. Yeah, exactly, yeah. man. People would rather sit around and watch that crap. Yeah, uh, I know, and, and it's. Uh, it, it's 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 a shame because it gets 
it gets in the way. Like for me, what a good, a real good journalist would be doing would be right. Okay, he's tweeted that. What's the story behind it? So you ask a few other people. Uh, and then you go to the player, well, what was your motivation in tweeting that? And then you go to the organization, what's your response? And you cobble something together from all of that information right. that resembles something worth reading. But, oh, my God, Stefano tweeted something about Jews. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's it. The world is over. That's it. Let's. And all that happens from that, all that snowballs. And, again, I'm not saying it's not worth reporting on. But reporting on the tweet in isolation is not good journalism all that happens from that is you get one of those threads on reddit let's take his sponsors away let's take his money away i work dead end nine or five job and i hate it and i couldn't say these things so no one else should be able to have any degree of, of any kind of leeway when they make a mistake because i don't get it and i'm so bitter and blah 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 and that's all that happens i don't consider that a productive use of anyone's time or anyone's resources if you want to expose people for doing things bad because obviously i don't support anti-semitism i don't support racism let's get the full picture let's look at the context of the tweet let's look at why did you tweet that? Let's talk to the player themselves. Can they explain it? Let's go to the organization. Let's get the whole picture before we just go off on some kind of like half assed drama, you know, be, just because ultimately that's it. it, it no one's going to appreciate all the extra work you've put in. But again, it, co it, com it comes down to that pride thing. You know, you've got to want to be, you've got to want to do good work. And if you don't, then, you know, sack it. Yeah, let's all write about social media. You know, so, it's pathetic. How much, well, how much of this issue has to do with just our demographic, right? Or just community and, mm -hmm. and what demographic the community falls into? Because, you know, this, I, I kind of classify this stuff as more of like tabloid stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And, I mean, obviously, well, they, you know, that, that's what people tend to react and, to, you and, know. And each community is slightly different. I mean, you look at the, 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 the console community for Call of Duty, the story all the time is about roster changes. That's like the big stories. Yeah. They love that stuff, That's you true. know, so people tweet about the roster changes. You know, who's with what team now and so on and about the pros and things. I think each gaming community is slightly different in how it reacts to, you know, how news is portrayed or, or where they get their news, but um, I don't know where I was going with that, but anyway, I just needed to say that. <laughs> what? God, I had an idea there and I lost yes. it. Yes. I love it when that happens, man. Yeah. Senility, it's, it's terrible when it happens to the young. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah no I, I I know exactly what you're saying like uh, you know how each community is different and they're gonna want to see different things and you know uh, the bulk of anything is gonna be like you say perhaps discussion about roster changes or whatever but it's when we kind of uh, segue into that kind of sensationalist and salacious kind of aspect of of what esports can be and I'm sick of seeing like more people reporting on the seedy underbelly of what players are doing in their spare time as if that's gonna you know that's gonna help the scene progress grow and i'm not again i'm not saying they shouldn't be doing it but then they don't have the balls to attack an organization that owes somebody money i mean that in itself is a hypocrisy right there you know like well we're gonna nail a player to the wall for doing something unacceptable but the people that are really doing some unacceptable shit and making esports seem like a sewer well we're gonna give them a pass because you know they didn't tweet about how they robbed fifty thousand or whatever. You know it's uh, it's crazy. I I, th I don't I don't like what the um, again all the focus on all the social media stuff. I think a lot a lot of the time it's a substitute for actual real stories and real journalistic work. Mm -hmm. what, so when it comes to like written journalism versus like videos, you know, like just video reporting. Um, right now, I mean, what would you say? The traffic's like for for each because I mean from my opinion you know from my from vantage point obviously I don't have any analytics or numbers to really back it but it, it just feels like video is such a big you know just a big sexy thing to look at these days compared to you know reading an article or or trying to get somebody to read this long you know three page hmm. article. Uh, I want to be all uh, yeah I want to be all like stoic and be like you know oh, it's a it's laziness, it's sheer laziness. This young generation, they, they don't want to read, and, 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 and but I, I can't do that. U ultimately, uh, if you refuse to evolve uh, with, with any medium, you deserve to be left behind. It's just that simple. And it's upsetting for me because, you know, I, I'm pride myself on my writing. I think writing's my strongest suit. I definitely prefer writing to being uh, on camera. I like the kind of impersonal, you know, impersonal kind of uh, position you can take with writing. I like the craft of it. I like wordplay and you know, all the stuff that goes 
goes into a, a good article. Um, but, you know, you're right. People want uh, stuff on video. And there's always going to be some stuff you can't really present on video. You know, I think editorial, uh, where you have an opinion thing, it's a guy just ranting at the camera, uh, I don't think is as good as a strongly worded piece of no, writing. No, I think you can lose every, people easier. Happens all I think the time. you can lose people easier yeah. when you're ranting as exactly. opposed to when you lay it out, write it out, you know, outline it, even bullet points in a in an article. You know, if people do want to skim through it, they'll hit those bullet points. Um, I agree. I, I like writing a lot. Um, and uh, somebody just mentioned in the chat that it's practically dead. I don't necessarily yeah. think that. I think it's just evolving. Um, I think it's going to be a combination yeah. of video and, and written. I mean, I would much yeah. rather read something, but I think nowadays you have to read it. They have to write it in such a way that it really gets the information there in three, four paragraphs sometimes. Yeah. You know, it has to just get there because people want it, the information quickly. Mm -hmm. mm, I'll ne I'll never I'll never drop that because you know I, I want to I want feature length articles in esports. Mm -hmm. I'm sick of people writing 1,200 words and being like, oh my god, it's such a you know TLDR. You know, TLDR. Well, all right, then you know, yeah, go fuck yourself. I'm sorry, right? Like you know, if you want to perpetuate some sort of like pseudo functional uh, illiteracy, that's cool, right? <laughs> but like TLDR, just get the, get off my website. Then it's all it's all TLDR because we hold ourselves up to a standard of what the print media would actually have. So you know, I I regularly go over three thousand words in an article the people who get to the end it sh you know they don't turn around and go oh god that was a slog Whoa, that was horrible uh, i never want to do that again they're like wow that was pretty fucking cool that was a good that was a good article you know so yeah yeah brilliant and, it, and you know look i'm not saying videos to substitute for people who don't want to read or anything i'm definitely not saying that i think some things work better like interviews i think in video if you ask the right questions are, are amazing because you get this you get so much happening at once the the you know it, it Body language and uh, you know the so, so eyes. Now it's gone full circle. We've gone full circle all the way back to Rachel again. Yeah. <laughs> no, oh, no, 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 that's not. Oh, that's not. Uh, but yeah, asking the right questions is, is very important, and you make a good point, Mark. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, look, I I just think you know, like at the end of the day, there's going to be some stuff that people are always going to absorb uh, in in written format first and foremost. Um, and I think there's some things that are themselves in an art form that can't be replicated in video. And I think there's some things that video does exceptionally well. And and the best coverage of an event and the best journalism is always going to be that happy medium uh, of the too um and you know i think it's a shame when people say things like the, the written word is dead because it's all you know it's always going to be again if you look at sports journalism um you know the good writers over at espn you know they're worth their weight in gold to the website because of what they bring and and people who you know just just great writers in general you know the, the talent that they've got uh you know, it's it's something that can't be touched. You know, a, a really cool video producer is never going to come close to uh, them in terms of artistry or, or the p number of people they're going to reach and the number of people that are going to want to see their stuff. So, so yeah, I think it's it's definitely all about the balance. But uh, if you don't move into video in esports right now, you're going to get left behind. You're anachronistic, and you are going to die. So, nothing like regular syndicated video content. Yeah, especially if people are seeing it. <laughs> yep. Well, that's that's how you make it. You make it for six months and nobody sees it. And then all of a sudden, people start seeing it. Then you stick your foot in that wheel and it's turning so slow. And all of a sudden, it rips your foot off. And you're like, "Damn, that thing's got some force behind it, right?" And you're like, "Yeah, you better best keep going." <laughs> all right. Let's talk about let's talk about I guess games that are being covered right now in Cadred. Um You know, right. obviously for a long time you guys were covering FPS, and and yeah. it wasn't until you know I wouldn't say you're well. A little bit later on, you guys ended up deciding to, you know, get into MOBAs like, like Han and League and, and obviously StarCraft 2. Uh, talk to us kind of how the breakdown is for you guys when it comes to staff, like writers and, and content producers. Um, it's kind of tough because uh, it fluctuates so wildly. Like, uh, I think a lot of uh, the volunteers we get coming our way each time we have a recruitment drive, it's about wearing a tag, being part of something that's going to elevate them from other people within the esports scene. It's it's about status. And then when they realize I'm a bit of a taskmaster and you're actually going to have to do some fucking work, uh, all of a sudden, you know, oh, well, it's not what I thought it would be. And, and, they're, and they're out. So it's see ya. But the, the hardcore that actually, in a lot of them, want to do journalism full time, they want to learn, sharpen 
developing their tools. Um, you know, they stick around, and we've got we've had staff, you know, volunteering for like three years that have like you know propped oh. up our StarCraft Two coverage or whatever. You know, that they, they, we give them hardware, we take them out to events, um, but we still aren't in a position to salari salarize them all, which sucks. You know, because I'd love to give them more money, um, but you know, it's just not that simple. Um, but you know, uh, yeah. In terms of the breakdown, of, like our staff writers, I, I think we've got at least one dedicated senior person for each of the games, and we've got probably is about eight to ten kind of volunteers. Which, to be honest, I don't. Again, I hate this idea of scene journalists. Like you, when a volunteer says to me, I'm like, I link him to a news story on Team Liquid or whatever, and say, write that up, yeah. And he goes, oh, it's it's about StarCraft Two. Well. And it's the facts, right? Just write them up. Yeah, yeah, but I, I only play Counter Strike. Yeah, but dude, 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 it's you're writing facts, <laughs> you're regurgitating <laughs> facts. It's it's a standard journalistic thing to do, right? I mean, it's what you would. Do you think when you're like, you know, at a newspaper, you, you cause something comes through on the you know telex machine or whatever. Oh, sorry, that's about a cattle per tree. Uh, no, 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 that's a social issue. No, 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 that's local news. I'm not going to write that up. No, you're going to write it up. You're going to write whatever you're told to write up. So, you know, I, I think it's uh, a lot of people don't stick around because they it's never the perceptions of what they think it's going to be. But um, I, I've been so happy with the way we've been embraced with the StarCraft II community. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, you know the the way that they've supported what we're doing, uh, the the personal support that's come my way, uh, in terms of like you know getting nominated for that Reddit thing, go out to the Blizzard World uh, Championship Finals and stuff, and um, you know they've been really behind what we're doing, and because of that we're gonna cater to them. I'm not gonna jump into another game like Dota 2, even if it's bigger or whatever, and and fob off uh, with inferior content. The people that have backed us. And we worked really hard to get where we are within StarCraft 2. So I'm proud to say that that's one of our main games now. Um, Counter-Strike's always going to be there because that's what Cadred was founded on. And League of Legends, I mean, you know, on the cynical side of things, if you're not involved in League of Legends, you're losing out massively uh, in esports. But on the other hand, um, you know, I think it's a great game. <laughs> I actually like it. I actually think it's a great esports title. Hey, I wanna, we, we all want to get involved. We just need to find a way to get involved. Yeah, well, I mean, again, that's, that's been the problem. The problem, my problem with League of Legends has always been, how do I get involved? I go to Riot, you know, a year ago, and they tell me, well, you know, uh, we don't get involved with teams or whatnot, right? And I'm like, okay, well, streaming providers are the ones funding this whole thing. You know, I'm I'm sponsored by a streaming provider. I go and I offer a League of Legends team mid last year, seven point five k a month. They laugh at me. Well, yeah, because because yeah. of the shit. You know, they they they're in an artificially high position. But we saw all this with StarCraft too. Exactly. And the right. bubble will burst, and everyone will grab what they can while they can, and they'll, you know, they'll kill the golden goose. And then they're going to be sat around, and in two years down the road, League of Legends people are going to be begging for uh, organizations to pick them yeah, up. Maybe that's when, that's when we should move in. We'll, we'll wait until then. Yeah, well, the, yeah but I mean, you know, just, just, just to tell everyone, you know, if there's any legal, top League of Legends players watching this thinking that you know, it's going to last forever, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, every, every player in every game thought that way. And, you know, you've come kind of late to the party, so at least learn from others' mistakes. But, um, but yeah, you know, look... We're, we're pretty, we're pretty I, uh, in StarCraft 2. Our positions in StarCraft 2 are pretty deep. So Yeah. But, but so, you know, in terms of coverage, look, we're always looking to expand, and I consider us an eSports website. I want us to write about all the big games. We're having real trouble finding people uh, to help us with Dota 2. Um, so, you know, if anyone wants uh, to, to, to apply... Hey, you know, th th that's a definite in because we've got one dude who writes it all, and his <laughs> life has been miserable. <laughs> oh man, what, I can just imagine what, what you whipping that. What a great, what a great game, though, man! Like everything about like that I I consider like true about esports is like possible with that game. What Dota two? Yep, mm -hmm. hmm. it's such a perfect game for what we try to do. Yeah, they've done a lot of nice things. Yeah, yeah, at, the the same time, at the same time, like, I'm leaving Dota 2. Everybody I know is leaving Dota 2 because it's just a din shambles right now for one reason or another. Mm. No, it's, it's, it's so sad. Well, Do Dota the game's 2 not out shambles. yet, so... I mean, yeah. It's still beta. It's still beta. Yeah. The, game, the game needs to come out. I wish they would I come think, out. I think people are too quick to write off certain things because we're we're at a point now where we just expect it when it comes into the into our little esports world that it just has to be ready. Um, that goes for everything, for writing, for players. You know, a player comes in and from another game and 
everyone knows him from that game, and he's all excited. And he comes in, he doesn't do well. Then guess what? I mean, he has a really hard time making it. You know, no matter how well he, you know, how, no matter how good he gets from that point. I think people just expect this quick results, um, mm. quick answers to mm. everything. Uh, oh, just incidentally, I, I want to ask. I, I want to ask a question. I know. Sorry, yep. Chris, I'm stepping on. I'm stepping no, on. No, no, go for it, man. This is open. I'm discussion. just going to say, taking over your show, uh, <laughs> right? But like, w when you see StarCraft Two players saying they're going to switch to LOL, like, I mean, what do you guys think about that shit? Because you know, it makes LOL. me kind of laugh. Yeah, yeah it makes you LOL. laugh. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Makes me laugh too. Yeah, yeah, because it's like you know, we get where the game is. I mean. Well, it depends, it depends on who it is. I mean, well, look, right? I mean, look. I just, I just the bottom line is the... though, like, this, like if 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 the, if the developer is going to spring everybody who can qualify for season three to one hundred six seventy six thousand dollars per year stipend for the team in general, which means you can lick, make a living, you can actually put food in your mouth playing this game. And in order to do that in StarCraft Two, you have to be really, really, really good. You know, like really well, good. It's, it's not That's even... all it is, though, Mark. Because I had this conversation the other day. Um, mm -hmm. You know, as much as people bash on bash on Destiny, you know, some people do. A lot of people like what he does, no matter what he does. But um, I think he made some good points about the fact that for a lot of people, the game has just become stagnant. It's become boring, mm -hmm. and they're just looking for something that's a little bit more exciting, where there's a little bit more activity going. Not not a lot. Not that there's not a lot of activity going on in StarCraft. There really is, but there's just um, there's this sense that just things are not quite. As they should be, or as they were, yeah, and people I agree. Are, mm -hmm. they're ready yeah. to move on because it, there's there's something more. It's more exciting. Um, I'm not saying that it is because I don't play either. It's premature. Um, but I just think I think some of that is that people are just bored of the game. It's it, yeah. Well, I I love uh, you know I love I love Destiny. I think he's a. I mean, me and him have uh, you know done interviews together. We we, we talk. He's a he's a cool guy. Um, you know, made some mistakes, <laughs> no doubt, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, think, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think I think he's taught everyone in these spots a valuable lesson about you know photographing uh, genitals and and uh, you know that's very important. I hope people do learn. Or giving passwords to what, women that you're, <laughs> you shouldn't you know, trust. You can all learn something from that. I yeah. think. If LOL uh, but, but, Starcraft with the executor on crack, then what would he see when he saw Destiny's play? He'd be like, oh. yeah. But the reason it makes me laugh. Uh, is because it's this assumption. Like I see a lot of stock of two players. Because we're good at this game, we're gonna we're gonna pick up League of Legends sure. no problem and be immediately in a top team and be immediately earning a salary. I mean, you know, even if we want to be honest and say, okay, maybe League of Legends is more accessible than other games. Uh, which I, some people I gotta take be honest. I gotta be yeah. honest. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stir up some shit here. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, do it. I came from FPS, man. I came from Battlefield. I came from, you know, yep. Call of Duty, right? You know, we won four Call of Duty championships last year in the whole nine, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I fell in love with StarCraft, madly. I love StarCraft. It's my favorite game, bar none. Mm -hmm. But Dota and League of Legends, seeing shit just blow up all over the place and everything like that, without me knowing what the fuck's going on, is more exciting. Yeah, well, no, but I, I, I agree. I, like, I mean, it's going to sound awful to say it, but, like, uh, even as I'm trying to be a StarCraft 2 journalist or whatever, I... Don't really enjoy watching the games. They kind of pass me by. Um, whether that you know, and I, I, it's not that I don't understand it, um, because um, I, I was actually the first UK journalist to review the game. You know, I was one of ten people that went to the to the launch with with Blizzard in the UK. They invited ten people to like a pre-launch party, so I was involved right from the start. Um, but you know, I just. It just, I know, it's just, it isn't as exciting as a mobile title for me. And I, again, maybe that's because we come from FPS backgrounds, because that's my background in esports as well. Well, actually, before that, fighting games. Um, well, I, think well. that, I think it's just that I think it's just that in FPS or any kind of team game, there's this constant tension that's there, even from the very beginning of the game. There's this constant who's going to make it to the cutoff, who's going to who's going to do the hedge glitch, who's going to you know whatever, like whatever the, the mechanics of the game are, are active from the very very beginning. And I think in StarCraft, there's like a build up, but that build up results in a truly fantastical climax. You know what I mean? Like, the build-up of each StarCraft match in a really good game with two tightly, you know, combined components is, like, fucking unreal, right? But, I mean, you can have some shit go down real early on in a MOBA game that's still pretty exciting. 
you know? Yeah. So I guess it's just oh. different. I guess it's just different, really. Well, it's it's different, and, I mean, you have to remember, I mean, StarCraft 2's been around longer than the League, so, you know, we've seen a lot of the this metagame. I mean, shoot, I have another show that we talk about metagame, and obviously I've run out of content sometimes on that, that show to just, you know, go over the same strategies over and over again, right? So, I mean, you, you kind of recycle a lot of the, you know, a lot of the, the, the content and the, the casting that way, but I, I think a little bit, I think one thing that, that StarCraft 2 is lacking that maybe Brood Wars lacked was this, this sense of just fantastic, it's something just fantastic happening behind, before your eyes, meaning like this guy like Flash or, or Jadon or whoever is just controlling these units or just, you know, macroing something that's well, way beyond what you could ever I imagine see that yourself in doing. Too. I mean, I, see that in I, I don't, I, it's not as, the, the difference between it, it is not I'm, I'm the forever same. silver though, so you know, for me, it's I mean, easy. you're, I mean, you're like what bronze? I mean, Jesus. I yeah, mean, right. I, I'm exactly. fantastic to you, okay? <laughs> so, so that's you true. are, man. You're like so baller, man. I, just I mean, Jesus, me being like, master is just fantastic a, to you. Makes me want to sing a tempo so, song. No, but I'm just Please saying, don't. like, you know, it's just I don't think there's <laughs> that that sense yet in the game, and uh, you know. I, I don't know if it's because of the design of the game or what, but we, we don't quite feel that. So a lot of it has to do with strategy, and sometimes the strategies just kind of just kind of happen to fall into each other, you know, sometimes, and the result is, is uh, not necessarily the, the best player a lot of times. Yeah, I think you're thinking so. of it even on a deeper level. I mean, I don't even look at, look at it and say, well, there's just a lack of exciting games and exciting players and things. Mm -hmm. I look at it, and I think where this is where Destiny was going, was that the game itself, there's just some elements that are missing from it to, to, to help continue to grow a base. I mean, if you look at there's a lot of people, and I, you and I are both in a channel, Chris, as well as you, Mark, um, where there's a lot of people in there that will say you, they haven't checked Team Liquid in a while, they haven't pitch, picked up StarCraft in a while, um, and these were never players, these were never people that were going to be top pros, they were just people that enjoyed playing the game, and I think some of that enjoyment has just left um, because the game hasn't uh, evolved to, to, to really create um, and foster that, that community of casuals. Um, and that could be a conversation yeah, I mean, for we, we could, day, but I don't, I don't want to rehash all this over right. here, because obviously no, no, we, there's been two weeks of that, but really I think it just comes down to just the, the grass, you know, this, when something new and shiny comes out, people are more, you know, are definitely more seduced by it. And that, that's just kind of what's happening here. And, and hopefully, you know, whenever Heart of the Swarm comes out or whatever comes out, you know, it'll kind of come back to StarCraft in a way. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, the, the, the industry's the not going is, in. Heart of the Swarm is more fun to watch. I will say that. Well, of course, because it's new and they're new yep. and shiny units. Yep. I mean, that's and that's what's going to happen to leave. Let, I mean, something else is going to come along at some point that's going to draw people away. It's just part of the progression in esports. Yeah. It just but, always happens. I mean, how many? I don't know how many times. Um, I mean, and and it happens the reverse too. I mean, new games come out and people get pulled away for a while, and they go, "Oh, well, the old game we were playing, like Quake. I don't know how many times I heard Quake is dead. Quake is dead. Quake is dead. I mean, and it might it's on its last leg at this point. But, um, and I have to admit that, no matter how much I love it, but. Uh, the reverse happens too. You know, people get people always get pulled away to games. It just it will always happen. Yeah, it's it's the mentality of a gamer. I mean, we we always end up playing the next new game. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's why all these game developers have product life cycles, right? And they have sequels, and they and that that's just how they that's just how they do it. So esports is obviously a a, a different model. <laughs> I mean, we're trying to break that I think mentality in a lot of gamers. But all right, why don't we uh, why don't we take some questions from the the viewers at this point? You guys cool with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah go for it. Uh, so everybody watching, if you guys want to call in your questions, go ahead and add me on Skype. My Skype ID is ChanmanB, and um, I'll add you on Skype and I'll pull you into the call. So you don't have to actually have you know you don't have to call me because it doesn't work that way. But uh, let's get I think Keon's here, right? Let's get Kurt on here for a question. See if yep. he's ready. Our new promotions guru. Guru, what? Yeah, man, he's the guru of all things promotions. Who? Oh, oh, Ke oh, Kurt is. Oh, Kurt yeah, works for you oh, guys man. now. I didn't know that. Well, oh, we're, we're 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 testing the waters, but yeah, he's uh he's man, he's yeah, testing the waters. Awesome. All he's right, he's got a lot of good ideas, man. We'll we'll see what happens with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, hello, hello, hello. What's up, Kurt? Hey, hey. Hello. What's up, guys? What's up? You got a question, buddy? Uh, I wasn't really prepared, but you know me, man. I, I can always you. pull something out. Dude, always. You know, you know me, man. <laughs> Richard, how you doing, buddy? 
Yeah, yeah, no, nice, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm looking forward to what you pull out, no doubt. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what you pull out, oh boy. Whoa, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> We're in the ditch now. Um... <laughs> My biggest thing is, and I hate to really, we're taking it back a little bit. We're taking it back to, oh, StarCraft Two is dead. Oh, Chris no. is gonna hate this, but all right. Um, <laughs> but I really want to get. I I asked a very similar question last week, and I want to get Richard your opinion on it. Okay. Right. Uh, one of my one of my personal problems with StarCraft Two lately is not necessarily some of the problems that Destiny has, say, has said. In my opinion, like. Blizzard could make this carbon copy of Brood War with just updated graphics, mm -hmm. and it still wouldn't really bring the, uh, you know, what, what's needed back when people are comparing mm. it to huge numbers like League of Legends and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. But what I'm, what I'm curious about is the opinion on the ecosystem of how the teams are working. Like, in my opinion right now, you're slowly going to start to see these, you know, 60 or so player top players that are still stick around in StarCraft. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to see some of these lower players just ditch it because they're going to go to a game that might give them a chance. Whether that yeah. be the Legends or whether that be Dota, they have a, a or they're hopefully going to have from what I'm understanding a system in place of these players actually progressing, you know, mm. the you know the, the whether it be League of Legends with their Riot Championships and then uh, the lower leagues being a build up to that and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and but but Blizzard really doesn't right now. It's very very hard to break in. I just want to get people's yeah. opinions on that. Bounce around again. Well, well, uh, to pick up on one of the points you're making, which is about kind of second tier players and lower down tier players leaving, uh, and you know going into another game and all that. That's actually normal in uh, all esports titles, and it's something that kind of invariably happens. Like to give you an idea, in Counter Strike, you know, it was always the same 16 teams at every event. You were rarely seeing new players break through. You were rarely seeing new teams put together that could challenge at the top because of a combination of things. Experience, uh, having a big name uh, made you more kind of palatable to uh, support from an organizational perspective. Um, what would happen is those same 16 teams were fighting out for prize pots week in, week out, but there was nobody else. There was no chance of anyone else ever getting a scrap from that table. Now, nobody turned around and said, oh, the game's dead blah 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 it's uh you know it's just what happens so if you were left with those same 60 players um as long as there was enough people playing starcraft 2 casually and i got no reason to think there, w there wouldn't be because i think when heart of the swarm comes out and certainly all further expansions i think it's going to you're going to see an influx of new players with each one um not necessarily with a view of ever being a pro but they're going to want to watch pros play because everyone wants to improve and how do you do it well you look at the people that are at the top and and that's why it's uh you know that's why streaming exists and is profitable so uh, again if if we were left with just 60 people brilliant it might even be a better thing if people left to be honest because it might streamline the talent you know i'm sick of seeing these patch players at tournaments there's been a patch they they oh, yeah, serious uh, i mean uh, it's, it's i like, hate uh, that term patch play. well i'm, I'm I, look man i, I, I never I, even heard know, it I, Right, I'm, I'm gonna just be straight up about what my views are about it. On the one hand, it's great because it synthesizes drama, um, and that is, you know, oh my god, he's come from nowhere, but he hasn't really. It, this isn't someone who's been sweating and toiling. This is somebody where the meta game just so happened to change, and it's like stars aligning. It just so happened to align in his favor for that particular tournament. And okay, we get another uh, name to talk about. But it's the illusion of growth and development within the scene. It's going to get patched next week, and we're never going to hear about that guy again. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but nobody... So, I might use so, that word so, in reference to this topic, illusion. Can't talk about no, no, <laughs> no, so, so the thing about... I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, have to, I have to at least mention... The, the thing about patch, the patch players is that nobody, under, nobody realizes that the patch negatively in, affects like current players, too. So... Yeah, like, it does, but let's top just... players generally don't seem to stay there or thereabouts because the biggest yeah, attribute sure. of an esports professional is adaptability. That's why sure. Stefano can have no sleep for four yeah. days, turn up, sit down uh, with someone else's equipment, and still win. Yeah, no, Not... I, I, I totally get that, but I'm just saying, like, you know, there, there are players that have, have been successful and made a name of themselves from day one because the metagame was that way to begin with. And then once, you know, the patch came out, 
a lot of people struggling has a lot to do with the metagame. So I guess my point is, is it takes years before the, the smoke settles, you know, and, and then we see actually who are the, the great guys. Yeah, Stefano is one of the good guys. I mean, yeah, but, you know, Stefano, we don't see him build Muta as much. You know what I mean? So what happens yeah. if, if, if it turned into a more of a Muta type of, uh, you know, centric no, type I, of, of... I know what you're saying. But, um, yeah, to, to keep it on, you know, point for what Kurt's talking about, yeah. I just think, like, esports titles streamline and the people that aren't at the very top, but for whatever reason find themselves having a voice, yep. it frightens them for obvious reasons because they foresee them being shut out of uh, ever having an opportunity to make money again from the game. They predict doom and gloom, streaming numbers dipping, uh, invitational-only tournaments for high price money that they're never going to get asked to attend, let alone have a chance of winning. Yep. So they start talking about, oh my God, it's the death of the game. <laughs> but unfortunately, that is how all esports go. You yeah. find think... one that hasn't followed that pattern, and I would be astounded. Yeah, and, and, and once again, I, I want to you know uh, reiterate that I don't think StarCraft is dead or it's going to completely die. It's just I, I think that that is a natural progression. I do. Mm -hmm. I actually like. I'm I'm with you. I like that. That that's the way it's going. But yeah. that being said, you, you you compared it to Counter Strike, and that's that's my terms here. You know, like I, you talk on my yeah. level, so I get it. But the thing with Counter Strike too is that teams at least had a chance to break in because they were these media like there were always someone watching there was always someone watching your match you know so there was always someone watching you play either through replays or through live uh, spectate clients at the time yep. with HLTV so it was always this chance of getting out there right now there's just not like there's like if you know if hawk or anyone in that were hinderless or anyone beats someone in the open bracket all you see is like oh well, you beat somebody in the open bracket, and there's no, you know, it's like there's no, no fucking big deal. It's like whatever, you know. And like, mm -hmm. there's really only been two or three instances where it's actually been blown up, and you know, Scarlet, Illusion, stuff like that. But it's, I feel like it's just it, because the and it, may, and it may not, and it may not happen much more because the teams are tightening the belt a little bit, mm -hmm. and yeah, there's so. fewer of the teams, and yeah. Oh, yeah. they can't afford to bring in, I mean, yeah, great, some guy breaks out at MLG Dallas it's and like a, does it's really, like I told really well, control. now you got to make tough choices, i got to drop somebody to bring this guy in because we can't afford to add another person to the team. Yeah, right. yeah but yeah. you know as well as I do, John, right, there's so many, there's so much dead weight in StarCraft 2. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it, you know, in terms of organizations, you, you've got to start trimming the fat. I'm sick of seeing players sat on massive sponsorship deals that can't even win a, a, a ranked ladder game. I'm sick of seeing players that just because they've got big streaming numbers are getting opportunities that players that are actually placing top three aren't going to get. You know, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, kind of we're sick purists. of these. Yeah, but that's, that's we're, not purists. We're, we're purists for the that's, competition. Yeah, that's the business. That, that's, that's not necessarily the business the fat. That's not necessarily fat there, Richard. I mean, that, that, they're just yeah. people that have a should have a different role than being like a competitive player, right? Yeah, I think it's also yeah, important to understand like they should, be they should be entertainers. There's a platform mm -hmm. for them to go out and do that. Christ knows, esports is crying out for in intelligent, articulate, funny people that can put out esports content. Mm -hmm. Because I see a lot of shows like this one, you know, with the four. Uh, b b b squares with people <laughs> with squares. headsets on talking. I see millions of them. How many of them are worth watching? Christ, man, they're so boring. A lot of them, and the guys that have got on there don't know what the fuck they're talking about anyway. And it's just, you know, I mean, like I've said this about Live on Three. Like Live on Three is good, uh, I think, uh, in in some areas. But when Live on Three becomes that old boys, let's all pat each other on the back and talk about how we made esports bullshit. It's <laughs> actually. <laughs> Uh, you know, and uh, I, I, you know, uh, so I'd love to see him in control. And I've talked to Jeff, uh, and I've talked to Jeff about this. I'd love to see him say, you know what, I don't need this hassle. Forget the game. Forget competing. For, you know, forget mm. using a post He's getting there. Is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go out on my own steam. He'll make a ton of money, by the way, if he does that. And because yeah. he's he's great at what he does. He's an he's a funny guy. Yep. He's a smart guy, and he knows how to uh, present himself. He should um, follow but, what Grubby did. Grubby will tell you the team yeah. model is broken in the sense that if you really want to do something and you're not a great player, get away from the teams and go do what you want to do. You know. But the point is, like, and I'm not saying Jeff's dead weight. Because I see far worse examples. Everyone rips on EG. There are actually far worse examples of big organizations holding on to players that don't even attend tournaments, let alone lose games. They're just a name on a roster. What are they doing? You know they're salaried, but what do they actually do? You know, cut them. Get rid of them. That's dead wood. 
There is not enough money to be going around. You know, I know everyone thought StarCraft 2 was going to be the big thing, that we were going to see Star StarCraft 2 players on the same sort of money as footballers and basketball players. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, no. I, I got news for you. That was never going to happen. Okay, I think it's cool that we, yeah, we all got a bunch of shit. Um, we all got to goof off for a few years and not go to college. But now, unfortunately, uh, we're in a position where, you know, reality's knocking on the door, and it's time to just cut the fat. And let's have a look and see who's actually at the top and who's actually worth watching and who's actually worth competing. And I think, you know, that is, does that mean the game's dead? No, that means the game's growing up. It means it's evolving. Yeah, That's yeah. what happened. I mean, in the end, what we want from eSports is... We don't want to have to depend on the usership of the, of the games, and that, that's all we end up talking about, like with League and with StarCraft 2, is like you know the casual players and all you know all this talk. But what we want is we want folks that don't play these games to actually watch our games. You know that that's kind of what how yep, sports no, is. because then you watch something like the Championship Gaming series completely bastardize it, and it's all of a sudden it's not your game anymore. You don't want to sit down and watch it. It might be good for some moron at home. And let's be let's be honest, right? Like, you know, if you're... It's kind of like floating voters in an election, you know, that decide things. <laughs> but when it comes to watching TV, if you're a channel hopper and you see, like, an eSports program on the telly and you yeah. decide, I'm going to watch <laughs> this and sit there drooling, uh, like, d Jesus, no, don't make a product for those people. They'd be happy watching a commercial. They'd be happy watching a, the fucking testing screen. That's we don't need. We, yeah. we don't need to make stuff for them. And that's one last okay. point. One last point, and then I'm going to go to get off here because I know that John has to go pretty soon. But yeah, to, okay. to to talk to his point, I do think that um, I think that people saying that they want esports to be the next big thing, and they want to see it on television, they want to see all these numbers, they want to see people making NBA salaries and shit like that. I don't know if they necessarily know what, the, what they want. <laughs> you know, because once again, I, I honestly think that if if we were to end up on TV, if we were to be doing this, I think we would lose a much bigger part of what we actually stand for. Um, yeah. And and I was around during the CGS days, and I, I understand what, what exactly that means. And I don't think even CGS, if it was ran perfectly, would still be around awesome. because of the fact that, that <laughs> like people just didn't like the fact that what was being done to their community, you know, and it was no longer community. It was a, It was like this you know, uh, enterprise or something that they had no way of shaping or forming. Mm -hmm. uh, esports can be shaped and formed by really anyone. It's just a matter of, like, you know, how you're going to do it. So I mean, we'll, I mean, no matter what you guys say, we'll eventually get to that. But if esports gets big enough, it eventually will transcend whatever communities we have right now. I mean, that's just... Yeah. But it's just not there. It's just... I'm, I, was, I was just making a, just a general statement there that it'll just, you know, pie in the sky. It'll be nice that one day when we don't have to talk about, like... The developers having to do this or that for the casual viewer, you know, the the casual users just to maintain the survival of a game. I mean, it'll just be great. I mean, people in StarCraft think they have it bad. They should try the Call of Duty community, and those <laughs> yeah. poor guys have been fucking yeah. going yeah. nuts for years. That's dude. true. All right, uh, Kurt. Uh, uh, yeah, Kurt, man, that was uh, great. Told you. I love the accent as well. Where about you from? <laughs> North no, Carolina. I'm not even joking, man. That's uh, that, that's what I consider a proper American accent, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey man, uh, I've got to be good. The rest of America wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Screw those guys. Yeah. No true blue. Uh, I like you. Fucking me, me and Rich together with the accent. Take it easy, guys. Take All right, thanks, Kurt. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get. I mean, we got a. I think he's he looks European to me. His name. Oh, Henry, oh my God, my friend. Oh, is this it? Is oh, okay. Anyway, <laughs> it's just okay. awkward. Yeah, this is awkward. Brace yourself. Hello. Hey, hey Sigmund. How's it going, man? Uh, it's going uh, good, man. Uh, nice to see you on the show. Yeah, yeah, it's a, a nice to see you looking like a koala. <laughs> it's a good look for you. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> he has a koala um, icon. Yeah, I, I, I've got uh, just a couple of questions, uh, just two, really. Uh, I've been watching this from the start, and I want to touch back on uh, the discussion regarding League of Legends and uh, uh, considering what's more entertaining to watch uh, StarCraft 2 or League of Legends. Mm -hmm. uh, I love both of the games and I'm a former Counter-Strike player so I'm pretty much, I just love games in general. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've, uh, Chan, uh, Chris uh, yep. touched on uh, saying that it was more eye candy in League of Legends and that is why it's kind of taking over at this stage. Mm, I never uh, said that actually. But <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I, I thought yeah. I think, uh, it was, I think it was me that said that. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, no worries. But, but, um, Shit's blowing up all over the place, man. It's exciting. 
Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm fucking nervous talking about League of Legends on a mainly StarCraft 2 stream because people are going to flame me, but... Uh, you'll be, no, you'll be safe. Fine. I'll look after you. Oh, <laughs> Richard is here with the flamethrower. Uh, as per usual. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think um, the reason why League of Legends uh, might attract more viewers is because it's a team-based game. Uh, there's a lot more room for failure from uh, individual players and uh, for players to stand out and save their teams. And uh, as you said as well, it's um, from right off the bat of, the, uh, of a game, you can have insane um, fights happening at level one. You have uh, the combination of different skills uh, that will combine together mm. Uh, mm. to do amazing, uh, amazing stuff and also look amazing for the viewers. Uh, so I'm just, uh, I'm just curious about what you guys think about. Um, uh, well, obviously, League of Legends isn't just—it's not about it just being new. It's about this combination of skills, isn't it? Yeah, I, think, I, I think the reason that League of Legends jumps ahead and gets so many people on its streams isn't necessarily because of what uh, the gameplay elements are, because ultimately there have been lots of games that have the same elements that don't hit the same streaming figures. And of course there have been games that existed prior to this got streaming boom, where everyone streams everything, so there's no real yardstick to know how popular it would be. Uh, we're all kind of just t uh, testing the waters. But the fact is, you know, if they've got 32.5 million active players, mm -hmm. uh, League of Legends getting 300k on a stream is actually pretty shit as a percentage. I mean, I wouldn't... I, like, yeah, it's true. true. I, 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 yeah. I wouldn't be happy with that if, uh, um, you know, and again, it's like what I'm talking about earlier, you know, chucking enough shit at a wall and some of it is going to stick, you know, but ultimately, uh, you know, if, if that percentage of people are interested in the competitive side of things, that's not a good return in terms of what you're doing with esports and you need to expand your presence. Um, there's an elitism in esports, uh, which I, th I think everyone here... Like, you know, I can't speak for everyone, obviously, but uh, certainly I know it's true of me, I know it's true of you, uh, would watch any esports game that was put in front of them. Because I just like esports. I, you know, I, I, I won't necessarily enjoy some, uh, but I'll still give it a go, I'll still give it a watch, I'll still try and learn about it, you know. Uh, um, and I think the, that doesn't really happen with League of Legends quite so much because of this elitist standpoint that a it's an easy game b it's for kids you know all, all the shit that you hear and, and see on on reddit forums about why dota 2 is a far superior game and blah 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 blah, blah. yeah the the fact is league of legends is obviously doing something right because right now it is the big daddy on the block despite having the least pedigree and having been around for the the least amount of time in terms of individuals you either want to watch a 1v1 game which brings its own kind of drama or you want to watch a team game, which brings a very different kind of drama. And it's the difference between watching a football match or watching a boxing match or, you know, a UFC or something. And I, I think there's definitely room for both, and I don't think they should be at the expense of one another. The idea that people are going to not want to watch StarCraft because they want to watch League of Legends instead seems a bit strange to me. They should either want to watch both, or they should want to watch one. You know what I mean? It's like, you, you, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's an either-or thing. You don't say, right, I'm going to leave this 1v1 game where it has a huge meta game and an RTS thing to go watch a 5v5 MOBA title where the meta game is not as complicated. It just makes no sense. So you're either into the whole kind of esports drama, esports as a concept thing, or you're into two very specific types of, of thing individually, you know, like, mm -hmm. and you divide the audience up. But uh, the idea that, that you know, there's going to be people leaving StarCraft to watch League of Legends, that's absurd to me, personally. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's like sports as well, as you were saying. Yeah, um, like no, one, no one's going no to say, well, I love soccer, and I, I'll, I'll use the term soccer now just because I've been calling it football all the time, probably since I'm in gridiron or whatever, but I don't really care about that. Football's football, right? Uh, but anyway, so, you know, I'm going to stop watching soccer because I want to watch rugby. It's, it's gibberish, you know, and who does that? You either like both, or you like one, or you're prepared to give some things a go and other things not a go, and people pick and choose. And there's no reason why esports should be afraid of people being a bit more discerning in their viewing. But again, well, I want to know. I, I want to know from yeah. you, Richard. What do you think about Call of Duty? Since you got history in this in this game, and you see the yeah, biggest, yeah. Player base, biggest player base in the world. Now they're coming out with this title on console. It's going to have all these inbuilt streaming capabilities and all these esports features and mm. third-party camera views and everything like that. I mean, what do you see going on here? Well, I mean, again, I'm always a little bit dubious about console uh, kind of gaming esports as a whole anyway. I think it's never going to be 
you know, I know the numbers are all hugely impressive. I know Halo is one of the premier titles. I used to love watching Halo. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I think it's it's never going to be the same as PC gaming. I always think it's going to be a little bit restrictive. I am very dubious about <laughs> console gaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I've got no. I've never won anything for being a writer, so I haven't got any trophies. All I got some shitty little typewriter in the background. I'm not gonna, <laughs> not gonna, pick, not gonna pick it up in case it falls apart. But, um, but yeah, you know. So uh, I think it's gonna be amazing. But again, this is just the evolution of things. All that's gonna happen is they're gonna do it. It's gonna peak. It's gonna dip. And someone's gonna go. They had some good ideas, and we're gonna amalgamate it into other other things. Like what, what League of Legends has got with the spectator tools. If every game had that every game would have a huge increase in how many people were watching yeah, sure. stuff, you know, like uh, online at any given time. I'd like to see the streamer uh, effectively, you know, the idea of me having a load of game up on my PC, run a separate piece of software, stream it through a provider like Twitch TV or owned. I would like to see oh, that see, completely that's dead. That's, that's what you're talking about. What, you're talking about. what they're doing with Call of Duty Black Ops 2? Is load yeah. the game into your console yeah. mm -hmm. exactly, you and you can straight from your console yeah. right. onto Call of Duty Elite for everybody else to see and capture and enjoy, and mm -hmm. they can see it all on their consoles as well. And oh, by the way, when you look at Call of Duty like Black Ops or Call of Duty Modern Warfare Three right now as the as the current title, on each PS3 and PlayStation, they have been somewhere between seven hundred and a million concurrent players at any given time. Yeah. I mean, so think, so, you know, to, to think about that, it's going to make the League of Legends figures look like small potatoes. But, you know, we, yeah. what we can do is we can, we can learn from what's been done there, look at the software, look at the means, that, you know, that it works, look at uh, what we can achieve realistically by applying that PC games. You know, there'll probably be some stuff to get rid of as well if I know Call, Call of Duty releases. There'll be plenty of shit that comes with the good. Um, you know, and, and then we can refine it for a PC audience. I think what we need to do is we need to uh, basically democratize... <laughs> Kind of streaming and democratize uh, uh, the being able to view games readily without needing a third party. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I, word of all time. That's, I, I, I hate. I hate the fact that shoutcasters make a fortune uh, for not being very good at broadcast journalism uh, or you know radio broadcasting, but purely and simply because well they've got a stream and they've got the internet connection and they're considered the voice of the game there's probably a million great shoutcasters a million great commentators you're never going to hit um, so you know if we can kind of move forward again it's only going to be good for esports um, so what you're talking about is very exciting it's a shame it's on console primarily yeah. alright uh, All yeah, right, can, we'll... can I just throw one last question okay in? one last one we're going to try to get one more in after this okay yeah okay thanks um, I'm coming from Counter Strike as I said uh, I moved over to casting it as well, uh, yeah. and I love that game to bits, but mm -hmm. uh, I know for a fact that for me personally as well, it's a lot easier and it's a lot more fun to watch MOBA games or RTS games. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So my quick last question to you guys is, uh, what, what, what do we need to do for FPS titles to make it more easy for newcomers to watch it and uh, enjoy it and make it a bit more... Well, yeah, open for everyone it's, to. It's uh, all about pre-position, pre-cam, free cams. It's all about it's all about those camera points and angles and vantages mm -hmm. and and it's all about that stuff that you can easily do in StarCraft and MOBA that you can't do as easily in a fast action title. That fast action title. When I hear Sir Scoots Wait. talk about how they used to set up the spectator cameras on the over top of the D Dust Two map at the same spot every single game because they knew that's where the action was going to yeah. happen. They knew that's where the drop was going to happen. Like, that's kind of what we need built into the title, built into the maps, built into the way the game is spectated and casted. Well, you need, you know, you need a, a serious, a real producer with, like, 20, mm -hmm. you know, 20 screens like you see in a producing room. Yeah, I think it's about the presentation you know? more. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you, can, you can present a game in such a way by having a really good caster and how the production value goes in such a way that really it gets people excited, it gets people involved. I mean, uh, you know, even just having... the 20 minutes before matches start, just going over some of the possible possible scenarios that might happen in a match, you yeah. know, yeah. areas on the map that, that you're going to see some action. Those sorts of things will draw people in because they'll start to understand it more. Um, you know, I jumped right into watching StarCraft after having never played the game, mm -hmm. and I could go from one caster to the other, and um, I could learn nothing from one caster that everyone thought was amazing because he wasn't teaching me anything. He wasn't showing mm -hmm. me anything. I go to another caster who was uh, more involved in, in helping the, the viewer understand what was going on, and I could follow it much better. And that was a caster that might get 30 views viewers as opposed to a caster that get 10,000. 
So it really, I think it has a lot to do with how it's presented, uh, just as much as the game itself. Well, well I'm always really thing. dubious about people that can't understand FPS anyway. Like, I never, yeah. I never got that personally. <laughs> like, what is there not to understand? Like, guns, <laughs> I know. crosshair, heads, that is yeah. it. Like, I mean, you know, uh, yeah, like, there's it's so true. much more that's to true. it, though, man. There's, so, there's a guy in the yeah, chat. Yeah, I mean, just on a base work. level, I'm talking about, like, yeah. just to get mm -hmm. roped into it. Yeah. The idea, I, I see people watching StarCraft 2 games at these events live, and I know they're applauding, like, circus seals, man. They haven't got a fucking clue what is going on. <laughs> I know they don't, but it's just a firework display just like what you were talking about now an fps game has got to be simpler like you know it's got to be you think about the average intelligence of you know a grunt that gets given a gun you know and it gets sent out to you know kill yeah, people with it they're not geniuses are they so if you can do that with someone of little intelligence surely the, the below that quota can at least understand what they're watching i don't get it i don't yeah, understand it at all why why like yeah. rts and moba games seem to be more accessible than fps games it's always seemed to me to be crazy like insane yeah, you see the pro call of duty player sit there and run up to the head glitch and then sit, stare at three pixels on the wall for five and a half minutes waiting for that guy to make no, the cross path that's not how you play regular Call of Duty, where you have spy planes and, and noob tubes and, and flashbangs and all this crap going on. I mean, you just don't... It's a totally different... But how do people... No, I, don't, I just true. don't understand just... how people... Uh, people don't understand what an FPS game is, and, and yeah. they don't... Uh, maybe, it's, maybe it bothers me that they don't think about it past the fact that you're just shooting at people. They think, oh, it's just one guy is shooting another, you know, five... Yeah. It's, that's not what it is. I mean, CTF and Quake is a perfect example of there being so much teamwork involved that people... You know, uh, a good thing that Call of Duty community does is they do listen-ins, which I think would be a great idea for yep. for more um, FPS. Man, I'd yeah, love, man. So I was just I'd about to love to see that stuff for League of Legends. This guy, and Dota too. this guy, I used to work with in the chat, Boss Jacoby. Man, he was like the king of freaking Call of Duty competitive shit. Nobody even knew who he was, man. But like until it started to go on the circuit last year, when it was like big in Black Ops and PlayStation Three, all of a sudden everybody was like, "Oh man, there's actually competitive commentary to, to Black Ops." People didn't even know that shit was out there. People didn't even know like. And then of course, as soon as he started doing it, like all the big name guys like Stainville and all these guys started doing it. And then everybody was like, "Oh my God, did you see Stainville's competitive commentary? He had all the callouts. He had all the shit was going on. He was explaining the game and everything like that." And you know. It was like this big revolution, and everybody just like got all hot and bothered about it because they were like, oh, "Man, people play the game at that level, and it's actually like that complicated, and it's actually that much strategy involved." Oh my god! Yeah, mm -hmm. I still believe I still believe Call of Duty can work. It just it's, can, it, yeah, it can work. Oh, absolutely! It's just, I think it, it has it, the biggest potential. Yeah, I still think it has a legends. huge, ginormous, huge. Potential. Well, I don't know. And this Counter Strike just, Global Offensive, I'm going to be very interested to see how they develop the the TV plugin for that. And certainly, it seems to be more in line because they're taking the code that they're using from it from the Dota 2 TV. So to put that into an FPS is actually quite exciting. Yeah. Um, but you know, again, it's about whether people are gonna w want to stick with it and want to grasp it, and whether it's too little, too late. Because right now, FPS in general is just on its knees in in, in the esports realm. You know. Yeah. Unfortunately, I agree. Unfortunately. Yeah. All right. So but I, th I think that the the the, the, res the renaissance may be on console. We gotta open up our mind a little bit to that. I will never ever what? pick up the controller and play competitive. <laughs> well, it's, it's, I mean, that's it's all about mean. controller for FPS just sucks. Doesn't like, make sense for a sports game, yeah. absolutely. But for it does, for FPS, it, it does suck, but, but suck. But at least as long as it's cross-platform, then there's something to talk about. Like if you know, we've talked about a lot of games, right? There that could be cross cross console and cross PC kind of platforms. You know, whether there were, I don't know. Strategy games or just like SimCity-ish kind of games, but if we could do that with with Call of Duty one of these days, then there'd be I something to talk about. I wish you get the about. accuracy of the mouse and the left hand analog flexibility of the controller, because like yeah. just regular analog switch on or off, you know, ASDW is not the same thing as this weird twisted contortionistic <laughs> freaking, on, you know, dro dropping to a prone while you're flying around a corner when you're like, you know, you just can't do that. I'm sorry, you know. Yeah. 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 All right, Simon, let me uh, get one more call in here, but thanks for calling in, buddy. Thank you, guys. Yep. So see you later, brother. All right, John, John, you got to go or n uh, no? Uh, I got two minutes. What's up? Okay, Alan, Alan wants to call in. <laughs> Alan. Alan. Oh, boy. This might take longer than two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> hey. What's up, Alan? Hey. Alan writes for uh, Mobile Fire, by the way. And eSports Business. And eSports Business, yes. And, yeah, just... Go around giving my opinion to everybody. <laughs> um, so, Richard, one of the things Yo. that I want to you about is 
press releases and the way that the stories develop and how they don't do a very good job. Like, yeah. um, I would love every morning if I woke up and my inbox was full of press releases that I could then take that story, take quotes from the press release, and then post them up as a news piece. That would make my job easier. It would also give the team a lot more, um, I don't know, exposure. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. there's a circle jerking it on their website. Um, I don't know. How, how do you feel about that? Do you feel like press releases is something that we just do really bad in this industry? I'll, I'll tell you a, a true story based on true events. You're going to love this. Uh, I'm glad you brought up press releases. I got sent a press release the other day from an organization that I'm going to pretend like I'm not going to name them, and then I'm going to name them right at the end. <laughs> and uh, what, 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 they, what they did was they, uh, they sent me a press release. It was in uh, one language to begin with, not English first. It was in their native language uh, first, um, which is I speak a little bit of that native language as it happens, but not enough to uh, certainly digest a press release. So I skim down, I get to the English part, and I'm like, okay, cool, let's get this out. Now, for me, when somebody sends it to you over Skype, and they've added you specifically on Skype for the purposes of giving you a press release, that suggests some sort of urgency. Now, the whole thing with the media is, I'm a journalist. I am not on your fucking dollar, right? Like, I am not an extension of your PR. So if you give me a story, my responsibility to my readers, right, is to produce that story before anyone else does, right? That's, that's my job. So I hit approve immediately. I get uh, added to, uh, on Steam and other Skype ads. What the fuck are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Absolute abuse because I've put it out two hours early. It hasn't gone up on their website first, right? right. And I'm just like, Guys, really, really, we will never work with you again. We will never give you another interview. You are scum. You're an idiot. You're unprofessional. You don't know how to do your job. And to be fair, in the press release, when I look back, it did say don't publish until six. But equally, that's not my fucking problem, is it? If you're going to give me the story, I've got to run with it as quick as I can. So Mouse Sports uh, are now refusing to uh, do anything with me ever again. And they're going, we're going to hurt you. You know, you're never going to get any, uh, you know, attention from us again. You'll never talk about a big fucking deal. I'm sure we'll survive somehow, right? Um, so, you know, again, and that, this is why I don't like press releases, because it encourages uh, the organizations to think that they control you. That they're doing you the favor of writing the story, use our quotes, publish it at our time, do it all at our behest. When in actual fact, a press release, my inbox is full of them. 99% of them get deleted as spam mail because they're bullshit. I don't care about them. <laughs> so um, I really wouldn't give yeah, two months. See, I, think, I hate to say this to you, man, but like with that attitude, we would just never release through you. Because- <laughs> Because ESFI, would, ESFI gives us the time and the necess- necessity to make sure that it's done right and positioned properly. And if we and if we wouldn't get that from you, then we'd let you rerun it if you wanted to run it at all. So we're talking yeah, about but if you get it to somebody, shouldn't it be done right and begin? I, no, I completely agree from his position on if you get it, if you're going to give it to me, make sure your shit's together. I completely agree with you on that. But but it's not that, about um, that. But I mean, like it's it's hard because like these these organizations don't all have the professionalism that you do. Mm. Well, I, I wouldn't even. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people certainly would. Would, would dispute the word professional being used about me, uh, <laughs> uh, no doubt. But uh, what I will say is, like, if you said never do a release for this, right? This is the thing. Now, I'll, I'm willing to wait, but for me, the ideal time to get a press release is literally just before you're about to go live with the news anyway. Because the very idea that I'm going to sit on a story, we've just it's, talked yeah, at the start show about sitting on stories a bad thing, right? You know, okay. what, you know what I love to release through? We're sitting right. in on a that's inane. It's just I love the wrong Rakaka my story. You know why? Because I know that with Rakaka, it's going to go far and wider. Even if it's not, even if it's fucked up, even if it's not totally true, man, they're going to have that shit all over the place before you can say Jack Robinson. It's like a wildfire coming out of there. Right, because that's what they do. And I, mean, I wouldn't even, call, I wouldn't even say Rakaka are uh, a particularly good example of a journalist website because pretty much every story they've ever run involves here's uh, an IRC log that's taken completely out of context. <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> taken out of context some speculation at the end about what it could all possibly mean, and you know his pigeon English to to. Oh, You've got about 250 words, and that includes the IRC law. Oh, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't, like, a, right, you 
know what they're going to do because they're a gossip site. They don't aim to have any lofty standards. You know, that's cool. Like, but at the end of the day, let's not call them journalists. Let's not do that. Um, so yeah. Anyway, to, to to come back to Alan's point, and I'm sorry, Mark. It looks like we're never going to do business again. I'm, I'm, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time. Losing business on climbing the ladder. All right. No. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, but look, here's the thing. Like, if when things are done properly, Alan, it's great. And when press releases come out and they're done properly and everything's explained and intimated and blah 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 blah, and I get that. But equally, if we run a story a little bit earlier than you would have liked, you can't just burn that bridge. Shit happens, you know. And if you approach somebody politely, I guess I can take it down. But if I do that, it, uh, then it draws more attention to the mistake. Why don't you just publish it earlier? You know, I, I just don't get it. Like, I don't get what the big deal is, why it's all got to be cloak and dagger. And I hate inviting organizations to treat me like I'm a fucking PR guy. I hate I agree. that. I agree. Uh, you know, and I've worked in um, the press, the press uh, area for the Olympic movement. And right, cool. the press releases I would get with that were the best press releases you would ever see. So, I mean, maybe I'm just spoiled. I actually probably am just spoiled. Um, but uh, so I feel like we need to get away from – teams need to get away from putting news on their website. It's not a good method of doing doing things. Bring people – you know, give, that, give the story to somebody like Kadred or uh, ESFI or if it's League of Legends, give it to me. I'm yep. okay with that. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make sure people go to your website, and then it's up to you to hook them when they're on your website. Hook them with player biographies. Hook them with streams. Hook them with, with stuff that isn't news because you don't do news right. You don't do news yeah. right, and you need to stop doing it. That's what that's my message to teams. Yeah, well, I, I, I totally agree. I, I see a lot of like these smaller like team websites, and the way they write news about like roster changes and stuff is really weird. Like you, again, to compare it to the world of sports, you know, uh, when when you know Manchester United sign Robin Van Persie, they don't on the official Manchester United uh, website are like, well, we, oh, and we welcome Robin, and here's a quote from Robin, and blah 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 blah. blah. You know, it's like it goes out to all the news agencies first. And then they'll have like an it on the web. They'll direct you to an interview with the footballer in the shirt, or here was his press conference from earlier today, or you know. So it's some sort of supplemental content that you can only get on the website, rather than a regurgitation of the story that we've reported on to direct people to the website in the first place. So yeah, I mean, I just think like. I don't know. It, it comes down to that. There's a lot of people in esports that don't really know what they're doing uh, and don't really know how to do things the correct way by the yardstick of any other industry, especially relating to the media. And and certainly the press releases I get, I just, you know, I, I barely read them. It's nice, it's nice to get them, and it's nice to get one that's so good you barely have to do any work to it. But it happens so rarely, I've just learned you're better off going to the horse's mouth 99% of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. All right, Alan. Thanks. Thanks, thanks Alan. Nice to meet you, man. Uh, Mobifier, good stuff. Thank you. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Last one. This guy says you're his idol, so I have to call him. Who? Who's? Who's? Who's idol? What? You're his idol. Oh, I can so. feel the little heart floating around my. Sam, you there, buddy? Sam, you there? Hello. Hey, Sam. Hi, Sam. I really hope that's a lie. I wouldn't want to be anyone's idol ever. Um. Can I just speak my question, please? <laughs> sure, sure. sure. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, it's gonna be Richard Lewis, why are you such a small potato wanna be in the business? There you go. Here All we are. Right. Bye, buddy. <laughs> no, I no, they should answer that. Why am I? Okay, you want me okay, you want me okay, alright, sorry, sorry. We'll, 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 we'll call me again. Troll. All right, all right, right. No, 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 Richard I, wants I, to I, answer. You know, he I, wants to answer it. He wants to answer okay. it. I'll, 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 sorry. I'll, 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 oh alright, bro. Uh you know, uh, Luke Crick you know Luke Critical Green could, like, wreck you, mate. Yeah, I, I, I'm familiar with him, yes. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he could drop you. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah? Uh, what, do you, so you don't want me to answer the question? I'm, I'm happy to answer the question if you want. Uh, yeah, do as you wish, my friend. So okay, so your your question why are you was small in this business, Richard. What the fuck? Yeah, why, why am I why am I a wannabe? Well, I don't know. Oh, uh, no, sorry, sorry. Uh, let me just re re. Uh, why are you such a small potato wannabe? That's uh, that's the question. Yeah. Okay, so small potato implies that I'm not big in my particular field, which I guess I would have to concede. I'm but, you're, but you're a wannabe, a small potato. 
Oh yeah. no, I would be a small potato, or I'm a small potato wannabe. I think the two are, are very clear uh, distinctions. Do you feel uh, threatened by HLTV? Um, I, I th wouldn't say I feel threatened by them. They do things differently to us in, in certain areas, and certainly, they, for example, their stat system uh, is something we don't do, can't do. Um, so they do certain things better on their website. However, I can't think of one feature written, uh, feature length article they've written on their website that's been worth reading in the past four or five years. I don't think their video interview content is particularly compelling. Um, so, you know, it's like uh, you look at uh, uh, the two websites occupying the same space, and we both we both do very different uh, things. So I don't feel threatened by them because competition in esports is actually quite healthy. What is HLTV? Is that like a Counter Strike thing? Uh, it's the it's what's the Premier One Point Six uh, website, oh, but of course okay. Point Six sort of dying Sorry, on its like, like I said, I, can, I got here late, so I mean. Yeah, yeah. All nice. right. Yeah. So uh, what about Rich? Uh, apparently, he can bang you, bang you out. Uh, all right, later, Sam. That's <laughs> enough of that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm definitely not going to uh, answer that. But again, I think it's a, it's a key component. Again, this is what, just to summarize it quite nice and succinctly, that's obviously somebody that's come on from the Counter-Strike community. Yes. And yes. unfortunately, uh, we do. If anyone ever wants to know why the game is in the doldrums and not doing particularly well, it's because that's the kind of person that plays it and represents it. And that's the kind of level of maturity you have to deal with. Um, you know, on Cadred, I've, I've done my best work and my longest and most loyal work for the Counter-Strike community and received the most shit back from them. I'd done a fraction of that for StarCraft 2 and they've all been incredibly welcoming. I did even less than that for League of Legends and they're all fully supportive and wanting to see more of me. So it begs the question why anyone would want to occupy that kind of space when they're the kind of people that you have to deal with. But, you know, opinions are, uh, are all valid all around. I'm not going not gonna to shy away from them because that would make me a hypocrite. Yep, gotcha. He's a good sport. I don't uh, think yeah, I've ever had a. I don't, I don't think I've ever had a caller on that for that long with that. But all right, why don't we wrap things up? Mark, you still there? I'm here, man. Okay, can't see your video. But, uh, <laughs> Sorry, I had to hide my pajama pants from the world. <laughs> we already saw them, so like you don't have to. Let's get some If it's good enough for DJ Weed, it's good enough for me. Let's sit not sitting here going, man, what the fuck, Steven? I know you're better than this, bro. You're better than this. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know that was that was. We didn't talk about that. It's a shame. Well, yeah. I, don't, I don't feel like it, it was talked about enough. Honestly, on Reddit, I think I think there are probably like ten Reddit threads on that. Gosh, I was just gonna chat. To... Hey, Richard, I'm gonna smash you, mate. <laughs> like, is this how people? Is this how people in England talk to each other? It's just like normal shit. Or what? I get threats of uh, physical violence for every <laughs> uh, every every LAN event that uh, I I attend, uh, especially in the UK. Um, threats of physical violence totally commonplace, um, but no one ever really acts on them. It's, of course they're not, not because they're, they're like these. <laughs> they're just just thirty teenagers at home that are. You can give this guy directions yeah. if you want to, Richard. What was that? Sorry. Do you want to give this guy some directions? What, to, to where? To, to the next LAN I'm going to be at? It'll be ESW City. So. <laughs> yeah. I, don't know, you can get I, just, I just say, I don't know what country you come from, bro, but here, let me give you directions. Would you like to take the address down? Oh, my God. <laughs> I'll be waiting in the front yard with a pitchfork. All right, all right, enough of that. All right, let's, let's wrap things up, guys. Let's do some shout-outs. Richard, you got any shout-outs? Um, I never do shout outs because um, uh, I think it's kind of base and I think the industry needs to kind of move away from that. So uh, uh, oh, I guess what man. I will say is uh, thanks to Heaven Media for my um, continued go. employment and uh, thanks to everybody across mm -hmm. all the games that support the work we do on the website. All right. Mark, you got any thanks you want to give out? <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks to Richard for coming on the show. I think it was really, really, really entertaining. I mean, definitely don't see somebody as as uh, as mm -hmm. editorial, I guess. You know, I think that's really good. That's what we need. That's what the show's all about. Yep. Um, thanks for the viewers for coming on over after the GD Studio is done. You know, we do appreciate you coming on. We're going to look at time slots and all that stuff in the future. Um, and thanks to John and, and, of course, Chris for hosting the show. And, of course, Quantic, my team, all of our sponsors. Um, Razor, Machinima versus Twitch TV, DB Vision, Alienware, and uh, our partners in Korea, Startail. And we wish yeah. uh, the best for everybody in the Northeast who's underwater. Yes. Yeah, and I'll.
I'll I'll say that as well, Chris. Uh, when I was talking earlier about the you know the the fact there's a saturation of these kind of shows out there, I mm-hmm. actually do watch yours. I do think it's very good. I think it deserves a lot more uh, love and respect, and uh, you know hopefully that happens because I think you're doing good work. So um, definitely keep it up. And again, always a pleasure to be a guest. Thanks yeah. for having me. Well, I appreciate that, Richard. And uh, you know, again, yeah, like Mark said, a big thanks for you coming on. And and uh, yeah, I mean, this show, I think you know, I really really appreciate your candor and your you know, your honesty and everything on the show because that's that's what makes, you know, the content of the show good is that, that people are willing to, you know, to have honest discussions on this show about a lot of things that people don't talk about normally, right? So, yeah, well, again, it's just, you know, it, I understand why people don't do it, but I'm, I, I'm mm-hmm. you know, and it's easy for me to harp on and bang on about how more people need to tell the truth and stuff. Mm-hmm. I am in a pretty privileged position because I'm not going to wake up tomorrow and find out I've been fired for voicing my opinion. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there are some people where they would be watching bags of money fly out the window. So I, 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 I maybe a little bit sympathize, but uh, in the spirit of journalism, the truth right. must always out, right? Yes, and exactly. Of course, folks, make sure that you hit that follow button if you haven't, if you're just arrived for the first time today hit that follow button and if you're a routine customer be sure to click down there and click that subscribe button we'd love to have you as a subscriber you get access to like special chan man contests and all kinds of stuff across (laughs) all of his shows yeah well mark's just like mark's just doing all the all the I guess all the shout outs and everything for me at Don't the end of this. But, subscribe. but follow everybody follow you know <laughs> obviously follow Mark, follow John and, and Richard. Even though he I'm not sure if he actually wants you to follow him on Twitter. Or not, I, don't, but, I don't care if you exactly. do it. Exactly. But uh, it's the care. best place to find out, I guess, the latest news on like when my VODs are available, when when the next show is, that sort of thing. So uh be sure to do that. And the VODs for this episode, if you missed any of it, will be up on youtube.com slash chainmanv probably in 45 minutes. I'll start the upload like right after this. But uh, next week, guys, we have, uh, who do we have? We have Zach Mazada from Machinima Versus on to talk about uh, yes, network well, channels and you know promoting YouTube yes, videos yes. and making YouTube videos, monetizing, all that, all that business. Um, and so, yeah, so it'll be great to do that too. But again, Richard... Big thanks for having you on, and hopefully we'll have you again on in the future to talk about. Yeah, some yeah, great, well, great and, stuff. And anytime, mate. Anytime. Well, anytime. See you at your favorite news source awesome. this weekend. Mm. What was it? What, what was that? I said enjoy MLG this weekend and follow yeah, I'm your gonna, favorite. I'm, 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 I'm exactly. going to try and but I, I'm going to be at uh, ESWC, unfortunately. So I'm going to be working. I'll be in the trenches. Cheer on, cheer on my boy there, Quantic Hawk. He's going to be there representing North America. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Cool. But <laughs> all right, guys, that's going to be it for this week. We'll see you later. Peace. Guys, peace.